everyone, and welcome to Under the Table Season 2, Episode 6. This will be the last episode of Season 2. Oh, I know, I know, sad. But I would like to remind you all that don't worry, because we have some special episodes coming in, which is going to be a reunion of Season 1 and Season 2. Yes, this is going to be a, an amazing time, because it's going to be kind of like an actress roundtable. Everyone will be around, bouncing off each other, having a lot of fun. Those will be the in part two episodes in between a possible season three. But that's up to you, Storians, because you funded season two, and I greatly appreciate it here at Table Story. We really appreciate you helping us keep the lights on. So keep in mind that there may come a time where you see a season three potential. And if it doesn't get funded, it's okay. All right, it's all right. We had amazing two seasons, and we still have the round tables to go. But that's not what today's about. Today's about our very special guest, the man of metal himself, the forges burn bright in this young man's future. That's right. I brought on somebody that's as mythical as they come. Some may see his shadow is Cthulhu himself. That's right. I brought on Cord, AKA Mythmatic, to under the table. Welcome, my friend. Hello. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Yes, yes. So happy to be here under the table. Yes, we, uh, yeah, the table is it's it's like. It's quite spacious under here, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> oh, it's technique. It's me. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's me. I bring my own light. It shines off my head. Right. So. When I was invited for under the table with technique, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> here we are. Here we are. This is where, here we are. This is, this is where the world has taken us, Gord. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. it's a pleasure having you here today, man. Um, if if, if you here. don't mind, I know I gave you like an introduction, but um, for those that want to know a little bit of surface level stuff about you, go ahead. Boy, Joel's good stuff. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Cord, uh, also known as Mythomatic. Uh, the reason why I say that is I may be rebranding, pre-branding back to Mythomatic. I'm not sure. I'm in a weird state of not knowing who I am anymore, but who is? It's 2024. Um, I am Cord. I uh, do some forging um, that I've started to unlock ever since COVID, and it's always been on my mind. Uh, when I say forging, I mean like blacksmithing. Uh, it's always been something that's interested me, uh, so I've been sort of delving into that. Um, I've always been a role player since I've been 12, uh, when I started playing D and D and that unlocked my, uh, my acting, uh, interest. So I always got it. So I went into musical theater and then after musical theater, I moved to New York and after not landing any auditions, I decided, screw it. I'm going to work for myself. And what that meant was I'm going to work for Twitch and, uh, started streaming and started, uh, making up my own characters and my own, um, content and the own art uh, within uh, different video games and also uh, using that uh, medium of tabletop to do so. So I've uh, I've been playing D&D and role playing since I was 12, so that's wow. a long time ago. Um, and been I've always been the uh, the DM, the forever DM growing up, so it's always, it was mm. really nice joining um, Table Story and coming in as a player because I was like, I want to uh, play uh, and uh, yeah, I didn't need to, um, what's the word? Didn't need to, uh, I don't know, lost my train of thought. Uh, okay. I have ADHD and that's probably what we're going to talk a lot about today yes. is, uh, distractions and things and living <sighs> with ADHD in this creative world. Mm. But, um, that's it. That's me. I play, uh, I role play, I play games, I entertain, uh, and, uh, I have a billion started projects and none of them. Okay, we're we back. Are. I'm All seeing right. an ad. Okay. We back? People are saying we oh, back. Okay, there we are. All right. So, all right. Weird thing, guys. I've never had OBS crash until I streamed to the table story. Not saying it's you. Um, I think it's because I was recording at the same time. Maybe it's something with recording. And is and there a new update? You know, it doesn't load. matter. There is an there is an update for OBS I haven't done yet because cool. Wax has been crashing constantly, and I was like, I ain't doing it. Um, yeah, but I guess I need that. to now. Um, I yeah. Updated OBS in like two years. It's, yeah. I mean, it's been fine. So. Wait, did it crash again? No. Oh, no, it didn't. It didn't. Frozen. It didn't. Okay. We're not frozen. Okay, yeah, good. We froze All right. Last time. Wow. Sorry, guys. That this is literally in two seasons and twelve episodes plus. There. This is the first time we've had any kind of technical. technical I love technical setting pressings. Um, with with anything, and the fact well, that the OBS didn't close properly, it went on my channel. Yeah, fun. Okay. How great. Make this about me. <sighs> You're welcome. It was. It was my fault. My heart. All right. I hate technical difficulties. I typically freak out with them, but I'm not going to do that. Big same. I'm going to be calm and start over. All right. Anyway, for those that are here, thank you very much. Sorry now that we have to edit this poor thing. 
But as we were saying, and thank goodness it wasn't anything important, but we were getting down to Just thanking like, Cord for being here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, sharing his, his introduction, which I hope went through. Um, and if it did, we'll get to it. Uh, then you'll figure it out. We yeah, got two we'll more figure hours of figuring out what my intro was. That's right. Well, we'll until then, we have a tradition here. We're going to just start off with that. And then this, this, uh, things that happen like this drive me to do something I like to call drinking. So we're going to go ahead and get into that right now. We're going to, the tradition is drink of the week. So, Cord, what, what do you have for your drink of the week? So I've been turned on to, uh, it is Burlington Beer Company, because I don't have a honor. Um, but also, Burlington Beer Company has a, a, a beer called Creatures of Magic. Uh, it is a New England style IPA. Look at the label of this beer. It has a Cthulhu -y boy on it. It has unicorns. Mm. It has ravens, sphinxes, sasquatches, and it's symmetrical. It's got golds and pinks. It's awesome. So, I, I, of course, um, my girlfriend Bex was like, hey, this made me think of you. And I was like, okay. And then we had it. And I was like, this is really good. <laughs> so there's so many reasons why this is now my favorite beer. Awesome. Um, and why else? would uh what else would i drink today uh to celebrate uh me yeah so are you this buddy. sweet mythulu like drink that's right it's good it has everything that's that right. you're made of man Cthulhu, that's right. i am made of mystical. sasquatch unicorns <laughs> vector print yeah. and oh there's a little gnome in the middle too yeah i know uh, little, little, little about me there yeah little there about me. i love gnomes him. so <laughs> i haven't gnome. been able to play one yet Huh? I do love gnomes. They are hilarious, and no one likes them, and I think that's why I like them so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like gnomes. I think they're dope. Well, mm -hmm. I today, I was like, well, first I was going to go with, like, something that, you know, that I like to drink. Everybody knows I like whiskeys and different whiskeys, and I have lots of them. But today I was like, you know what? I need a match. I like to match my guest's energy. So today I bought a wine that I did not want to open, but yes. I did anyway. Apothic Red. Um, it is... I have had this. You've had and this, that is, and, and that is uh, wonderful because we're drinking it with me. It's like we had yes. had, we have had it. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, it's it's great, and it's inspired by Apothe Apotheca, a mysterious place where some of the earliest wine was blended and stored. Mm. Apothic wines offers a truly unique experience. I was like, you know what? I have a mythmatic person. Why not bring some mystery to the table? And here we are. Dude. Like, this tastes like blood and you're like well yeah yeah well it doesn't no, it definitely doesn't taste like blood just people refer to it as such grape blood uh, i wouldn't know what blood tastes like anyway um <laughs> i would hey, oh there we go well that's mystery indeed uh basically uh i was like typically you take off these like wrappers and then you pop the cork but they won't let you you have to sink your fangs into this bad boy and pull up so that's what i did and it has a nice little design on the cork itself nice. the apothic design is really nice it's really nice this is the first time it smells drinking really it out of the good. bottle today yeah it's the first time we cracked this bottle open nice it smells really really good no i'm not gonna drink it out of the bottle i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna pour it up I, I have my chalice uh the dragon chalice here yeah. and we're going to not pour it over the keyboard I but that's what we're doing i think i can pour mine in no hmm I'm trying to think if I have anything wacky I can pour my beer. I have a drinking horn, but I haven't touched that thing in. Yeah, don't do that. You years. might drink something else in that one. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah, it's probably like my last like in 24 hour stream where I'm like, oh, it's just like old Red Bull. It's very grapey. Mm -hmm. Whoa, wow, wow, wow. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of flavor. Um, take, take us on this journey. It's definitely a journey. So it, it, it goes in smooth, just like juice. Okay, it's at room temperature. I typically like to drink mine chilled. But the wine cone is chilled. We're like, eh, slightly room temperature, maybe a slight chill. No, I'm just like, make that bad boy cold. Um, but it's, it's room temperature. Uh, it goes in smooth, but it attacks your mouth. It attacks, man. It attacks, and it attacks going down your esophagus. a good review. Yes, yeah, uh, it starts yeah. smooth, and it attacks your mouth. Mm -hmm. mm, thank you. But it's in, a, it's, in a, it's in a way that you wanted to be attacked. You know, it's almost sexual. Uh, in your mouth um, attacked. yeah yeah it's, it's very good there's a lot of, lot of definitely tastes the great blends and a little bitterness is, is there but it's, it doesn't isn't not long lasting you know it's not just sitting there on the back of your tongue making you wish you had water it's really good it's really really good it's actually better than um uh what's that other wine i drank uh crimes uh 
19 crimes. 19 crimes. It's better than that yeah. one. That one has a like Snoop's strong wine. bitter taste in the back of your mouth. This one doesn't do that. Is that Snoop's wine? I heard that was Snoop's wine. Well, Snoop has a know? version of that wine. They have different versions of it, but yeah, the, Cali the California Snoop. Red is his. Yes. And this is Snoop oh. Crimes. Yep. And this is a California Red. Yeah, the music that you told me to download and play in the background. There you go. I was very excited to do it, and then I forgot to. Okay. Okay. I. Set, while you set that up, I uh, will set up. Uh, so, we, Perfect. yeah, if you're into wines or you're just getting into wines, Pothic Red is definitely a good one, especially if you're trying to get into red wines. It's a little bit harder to get into. Typically, people go white first because it's a little bit easier on the palate. That one right there, I could probably, I could tell you, definitely would taste good with red meats and uh, pastas and um, pretty much anything that uh, coats your palate. Um, would you cook with it? That's a good question. I Maybe not. I, I think I'm more of a white wine if I cook yeah. with something. Uh, red wine is a little strong. It's got a little, yeah. little, little bit of taste. Unless I want that. I mean, I've done beer battered pork chops before, and that's strong too. But, you know, the meats work well together. So, yeah, if you're interested in that. Wine battered uh, pork chops? Because now I'm interested in that. Wine battered pork chops, I have not. I don't, I don't know. It you might have come to do out with like a color. pothic red, where it's like questionably blood. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, pork. That, that's like, scary. Mm, I don't think people yeah. eat it because, you know, pork not cooked is just not. <laughs> it's not it's not the play. Uh right. we don't unless, like you're into, unless you're into having like things live in you. Um right. moving on. <laughs> a myth. We the are here. Sharing. Cord, we are here to talk to right. you um and, 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 and go under the table. And basically what that means is we start off with an icebreaker to break up the fuzz. I feel I feel like drinking sometimes makes it loose, but let's just let's go out of it. So of you it. seem you took us on a quite a, a a journey with like where you wanted to be and where you are now but you failed to mention one thing you like to hammer the metal my good sir so where did is is this more of a zen thing for you uh to deal with things as your escape um to be able to create and um have things, the physical you know attributes in your hand to create is is that something that you look at as a zen moment or is it something you're like yeah i just kind of want to do it yes both um i so what's nice about the um what's nice about me forging now um it's sort of always been a thing that i wanted to do um, mm. when i was a kid uh we had like a little play uh house down at the, like the uh when we, when we bought this house it came with like a, a playhouse uh that was like a glorified doghouse it had two little like slidey windows a mm. door but it was bigger than a doghouse but it was for the the daughter of the family that lived here first um they family of boys and then they got a brand new daughter and then they made this little playhouse for her and it's made mm. out of wood and it was cool but we uh when we got the property there was still that and we didn't really know what to do with it mm. so um uh i naturally took it over and called it my blacksmith um mm. I am, uh, in middle at what school, age was this by the way yeah middle schoolish. wow uh and uh i didn't start blacksmithing but i did um my dad owned a sports memorabilia store and then he started to get into uh selling uh rpgs and then mm. he wanted me to and that's where i learned uh dnd &D, because he had someone come in and uh teach us how to play dnd &D, and that's when i was like this is amazing anyway um he also had warhammer those little miniatures uh, sold at this shop so that's how i sort of got into this hobby and all of this mm. stuff but also some people came in with foam weapons and started doing like larping mm. events and um uh, boffer swords or whatever they're called um and i uh immediately learned like i can do that duct tape and and uh and, and uh pool noodles and pvc this sounds great so i turned the that play area into the vast viking which is uh the name <laughs> of uh the blacksmith uh for my backyard larp where mm. my i would invite my friends over uh the porch was our inn and tavern where we just sold lemonade uh, and ale and our ale was green tea uh mm. and um i was the blacksmith and i made these weapons for my friends and they would come over and i had the arsenal of weapons to play um so i've always sort of been interested in it mm. um whether or not it was like behind the guise of foam weapons or not um and then later after i was like making these swords and stuff i was like you know it'd be really cool we have a wood furnace downstairs mm. why don't i just like take a piece of copper pipe from a, a hardware store and melt that down or whatever that goes into it and then i was like you know what i shouldn't um so i never did that but 
Uh, it was just always in my mind where I was like, that seems easy and accessible. Um, my, where it's going to take a turn. Um, well, okay, yeah, there's where it's going to take a turn. My, okay. uh, COVID happened mm -hmm. um, after my sister passed away. Um, but oh, so sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I it's no um, it's she's passed away in 2018. I know, like I said, it's going to take a turn. But honestly, um, it's hard to like phrase it like this because mm. there's a really easy way to go wow that's horrible but when my sister passed away so much of my identity was unlocked mm. and i don't know if it and i don't know um where or what or why or how it happened um but uh there was a lot of like my interests like i have adhd and i'm fascinated by fire always sort of have been it's not necessarily like i need to light things on fire because it's cool right, but, right. like if there's a fireplace I'm going to tend to the fire. Right. Um, my sister used to call me a pyromaniac when I was a kid. Mm. And of course, me going, I am a bad person. So I never really like let my interests of fire be mm. a thing. So me trying to be like, I want to be a blacksmith always made me think, my sister's going to make fun of me for it. Mm. Um, so uh, a lot of things unlocked when my sister passed away. And a lot of me letting myself be myself in these different ways, like having a nose ring, painting my nails. Um, throwing out a man bun, uh, and even, uh, you know what, trying and, and uh, taking an old sledgehammer and uh, lighting, a, or lighting a fire and then mm. putting uh, some metal in it and then using the sledgehammer as an anvil mm. and then seeing what happens. Um, and that's when I started to go, oh, this is really cool. Like, mm. I, I start to realize because of my ADHD, the forge, for a lot of different reasons, I have... I have a big screen and two screens here, two computers set up, an OBS, uh, a GoXLR, I'm not trying to brag, GoXLR, two Steam Decks, uh, mm. and a, a two joysticks, and a. I have a lot of things here, and a keyboard. I have a lot of things here. My desk is a battle station. Mm. A lot of my life for the past 10 years have been here mm. at this battle station. Mm. So the forge has become a place where I could unplug. One time the uh, power went out, and I went, wait a minute, I'm going out to the garage because you don't need power, you just need the forge. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and like, that was like, I was able to unplug and it was mm -hmm. something that I could call mine and explore. I'm not great at forging. Um, I'm still learning. I'm becoming a lot better because of these years going into it, mm -hmm. but it is definitely uh, a self-taught thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of forging I like too, where it's because of my ADHD, it's hot clay. It will burn you. So you need to use hammers and things to sculpt it. It still has the same properties as clay. So, um, like, it, once you start to understand like how the metal moves, mm -hmm. you start to unlock these other ways to sculpt and make things. Um, and I didn't realize until the past couple of years when I started to go out to the garage and like start to have my own area like like the first bay of our two two garage two bay garage that first like a uh, garage door area that's where i have my desk that's where i have my anvil that's where i have the forge but as soon as i started to like move and separate my work from like my cord time mm -hmm. uh, that has been super super helpful um mm. but like i said because it's so hot and because it's so dangerous it, you need to focus mm -hmm. or else you'll burn yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is the, uh, that is what I like about it. I like being forced into the uncomfortable moments so I can learn. Yeah. And, and once again, like also, not once again, but there is that theory and it is known that when you are in this uncomfortable state, that is when mm. you learn the best. Mm. Um, so uh, it was a cool way for me to master my anxiety Mm -hmm. uh, and to just have my own space. Um, I'm not an aggressive person, so I don't think like hammering the metal is like me getting out the energy. Yeah, of course um, not. But uh, as of the last couple, five or so years, I've been uh, on a mental health journey. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been, I've got weekly therapy and I've mm -hmm. learned a lot about myself. But also in the beginning of this, I learned a lot about ADHD. And um, ADHD, uh, there's a lot of things about ADHD that are just misconstrued, mm. but one of them is we have an excess amount of energy. Mm. So um, getting up and going for a walk or getting up 
and uh, going for a jog or working out or something in the beginning of the day is probably best for someone with ADHD so they could just get rid of that overflow of energy that they have mm. so they can then have their um, so we could have our dopamine regulated uh, once we're a little bit on the uh, not exhausted side but once we're tired um, so putting that excessive energy into art uh, like swinging a hammer uh, or uh, yeah or bending metal or even like I do some some work woodworking but that's because it's like a necessity sometimes to make a handle for something else um, is just it's my it's my solace it's my little meditation station um, mm. like I said it's my unplug when I need to unplug away I'm like I'm too stressed I'm thinking about video games I'm thinking about the industry too much I need to go and just have my own time I go and have my own time there were times I thought it would be fun and I still have this thought where it would be fun to forge um, and do forging streams and I do like having forging streams uh -huh. um, but then again that's where I start to muddy where work is versus where court is um, and when I branded, when I rebranded from Mythomatic to Cord, uh, I was going to do more forging streams uh, and more off video gaming content. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't. Uh, I've just sort of not. I have had a pretty slow year when it comes to um, streaming, not necessarily monetarily, yes, but also that's because I haven't been around. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't streamed a lot. I've been just discovering things in the forge myself uh this past summer i tried to uh become a uh, like i learned a lot about doing ferrying uh so like uh, horseshoe crafting and uh, uh fitting horseshoes onto horses and trimming their hooves and things like that because there are a lot of people in my area but not many uh farriers locally uh so a lot commute in and i thought i have an anvil why don't i learn this oh, also okay. i love animals Mm -hmm. So um, it's been just like a nice marriage between burying, forging, and um, uh, and and my relationship with animals. Anyway, um, I told uh, Frank yesterday that I can talk. So you give me you give me a, anything, and I will talk. God, stop talking! No, no, this yeah, is right? this is fine. Exactly. I this will spill fine. the entire thing. No, this is fine. Right. This is this is this is your show. As I as I right. said, I warned Corp. I mean, I didn't warn him. I told him earlier. Uh, you know, like Elspeth like she ran the show and it was great i really like those as a host i'm here to just i'm, I'm like a the, the guy at the airport that's waving the plane in you're flying the plane mm, yeah. you know if you need to know where to go then i can direct you other than that eh, it's your show um you said a lot of things that uh, i took notes and I, I like to take notes i'm very that's just me i like to take notes on everyone i, I literally have a file with everybody's name a lot of things. i know what you do at night no i'm just kidding um so <laughs> basically there's some key words that you said first of all um if you don't mind talking about uh, uh you know the occurrence you said you had with your sister um sure. for her unfortunate passing um but was it's gonna sound wrong but please don't take it the wrong way audience it was fortunate for Chloe because everyone think everyone grieves and deals with loss yeah. differently um you start to be open to the idea of searching for yourself and finding yourself or unlocking yeah. those doors that you had to close yeah. due to things and that happens with society a lot with us yeah um you bring up your 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 identity with fire um which is interesting because i used to be the same way when i was younger i was just like yeah. man it's so interesting that this thing uh, you know has warmth and you get lost in it and um you know but everyone was like don't do that don't put that don't put kleenex yeah, and yeah. candles frank i'm like well well but it's nice i used to do that yeah. um <laughs> i just yeah, wanted to right? see i was like chemical reactions i was a scientist man i, I just had to yeah. do things but a lot of people who consider fire be a destroyer of things but you took that as a way to show that it creates and i think that's really nice and you also use that to work on something a lot of people do not understand to this day even doctors don't really understand that adhd we're still discovering yeah. there's yeah. so many ways to go about it but you use it as a way to focus i think that's really great man i think you have a great story here to where you took something that could have been toxic in your life um could have been sad could have been you could have like right. gotten in the corner and just just forgot did, about who you were i, I did have yeah. those moments yeah mm -hmm. i did have uh i did have grieving and i yeah. did have um uh i did have some hard uh battles to fight mm. um they were um and, and i look back at them now and i'm like 
I'm so happy that they were as short as they were. Yeah. Um, like yeah. My, my morning for me um, when my sister passed was I came at a really interesting time mm. because uh, marijuana became legal in Vermont like that summer. So uh, that being able to be uh, that that itself being uh, accessible mm. was a slippery slope for someone going through mourning. Um, and uh, that is what happened. Um, mm. So, but about a year or so into or past my uh, sister passing, I was able to um, start to get control of um, my life again. Mm. Um, and that is, I think that sounds like really dark, but like I started to get control of like my, what made me happy again. Uh, and, and, and I think it was also probably forging, like learning these things. Um, I was talking to my therapist um, a couple of years ago, mm. and um, I mentioned that I wanted uh, that I once, like when I was in, when I was a kid, my father uh, had the after-school program. Like when we first moved up to Vermont, mm. uh, he started an after-school program, and we went to the recreation center nearby, mm. and we rented their bows and arrows, and we just did target practice. I was really good with a bow and arrow. Mm. Uh, and that was like the last time I ever had one in my hands. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm really good at archery. Why haven't I ever done anything with that? Um, one time when I was in middle school, I had access to a bow, but I think uh. my mom thought it was uh, the school or someone gave it to me, but my mom donated it to the school. So I was never, oh. I never got to like explore it. Mm. Um, so yeah, a couple of years ago, I was like, you know what? I have money right now. I need to, I'm, I'm doing it. So I have a bow and that's the bow that I had on Sweet. my shoulder for when I was playing Silas. Oh. Um, uh, and uh, so, but yeah, I, uh, it was just like those sort of things where it's like, I never, there are these interests that I had in life that I just want to reconnect with or mm. um, like touch base with and be like, wait a minute, do I, am I actually interested in this? Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I lost all, I think I have, I have two arrows left. All the, other, all the other ones are in the woods, but I'll probably get more and continue shooting. Mm. But yeah, there, it's just like those sort of things where same thing with forging, where I was like, I'll never try. I'll never know unless I try. Yes. Um, and you don't realize um, until something drastic that shakes your world, like losing a sibling, mm. where you go, I should try that. Yeah. Or like, so um, a, lot of, a lot of my last couple of years of me discovering who I am is letting myself discover who I am. Yeah. Which is love really that. Nice. I love that. I really do love that. You know, when when we're young, we, we tend to say things out of pocket. You know, like, you know, I can't wait to leave the house, and I hate you, mom and yeah. dad, and like, yeah. you know, like if I die, no one cares about me. You know, stuff like that. But you really yeah. don't know. You really don't know when you yeah. you start to hit that little adulthood thing, and the light bulb start like slowly flickering on. You're like, holy crap, life is really short. I blinked, yeah. and I'm now forty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I oh, really need no. to start doing stuff. <laughs> you know, yeah, I gotta do regret, the things I wanna do. Yeah, regret yeah. is the thing that I don't wanna mess with when I'm laying yeah. in a hospital bed if I'm lucky enough to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. so at the end of the day, Cord, I wanna have some very you know, I'm really happy you're on the show because I wanna have some conversations with you that I have not had with anyone else on the show. Um, terrifying. Okay. Well, it, it shouldn't be because the technical I'm, I, issues. <laughs> yeah, the technical issues spark. <laughs> no, I was kidding. Yeah. I I like to self title myself as intellect. I really like talking about things that are just kind of out there. Um, you kind of spark some interest in these thoughts because um, I was always a space guy. I wanted to work for NASA when I was younger. Uh -huh. uh, everyone had these like goals. I want to be a fireman. I was like, I want to work for NASA. I want to. Uh -huh learn quantum physics and everybody was like what and i'm like a little kid saying yeah. this um and i still wish i did that um you know i love the stars some great I, youtube videos yeah. some wonderful youtube videos on how to learn quantum physics yeah and i've never i've never owned a real telescope and yeah. that's my next big buy i'm going yeah, to spend right. thousands on it yeah um, just because i really want to do, do it, it. I, I would spend time in college in an observatory like yeah because they you know, you would think you look into this little hole and you see this big thing. It's not that. It's everything's hooked up to computers and they show images. Right, right. Um, so I was like, I'm going to get one because one day I went outside and I looked up and I didn't realize how small I was, how small we are, yeah. and how insignificant our problems yeah. are until I looked up into the night sky and saw all the stars. Like so it. with this question, Cord, I'm going to hit you with a doozy. I can't wait. 
It's going to be a two parter. Okay. So deja vu, deja vu, the, the, the weird occurrences that happen where you're just like, I remember something like this. I feel like I've been here before. Do you believe that we have past lives and do we learn from those past lives? And if you do, have you had any occurrences where you feel like you learned something in a past life or maybe a parallel, uh, you know, existence that you brought into your life that has made big changes for you? I'm so happy you've asked, you've asked me this question. Um, <laughs> okay, so my... Here we go. All right, Lord so yours. my... Uh, uh -huh. So the... My belief... Mm -hmm trying to figure out how I can begin this statement as sloppy the better yeah I do not yeah. know if I do not know if we have had past lives mm -hmm. um that's I don't know I don't think anybody but, really knows but Right, nobody knows, right? But I mean, I'm like, I don't know if that fits into my theory here. Mm, right? That's what I'm mm. trying to say. Um, so in different, like, past lives... Deja vu. Um, let's just start with that one. So deja sure. vu, I sure. feel like deja vu... <sighs> it's hard. Um... My th theories about how the world works mm -hmm. um, is probably where it is best how to start this. Mm -hmm. My theory about how the world works is a lot like Spellwind um, and where there was a, whatever, whatever whatever it is. Maybe this Big Bang, maybe there wasn't. But um, at some point, we will all uh, collapse inward once again uh, and it'll all the cycle will start again. And if that's the case, then maybe that's where these past lives came from, yeah. from that last Big Bang. Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, that being said, I feel like, and this may not be, may not answer the question, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway. I feel like, um, there is an observational theory of quantum physics mm -hmm. where, um, the observer, so in my case, me, mm -hmm. the observer is documenting what's happening around them, obviously, mm -hmm. but the observer is documenting their own life and the mm -hmm. observer being me uh, or you in this case is going through life with the possibilities that they've accepted mm. hear me out um i feel like all possibilities of all there's actually a lot of what uh, uh a lot of uh spellwind's quantum magic theory is all based off of this my silly theories um but i feel like life and all possibilities are coming out at you in a flip book you know if somebody uh mm -hmm. if somebody was to have a deck of cards like i do right here mm -hmm. uh, and then flip through the cards all uh, right and then flip through the cards all uh -huh. at once uh -huh. right uh -huh. you're only gonna see what cards did you see so like uh, queen and the two maybe like right. three out of all the I cards went through this whole deck and you only remember three right Right, so it's the, it's that um, I feel like all possibilities are being portrayed at once. Uh, it's our mind that mm. can only perceive a couple of the slides through this flip book, mm. right? Um, and so um, the fact that you and I are sitting here today, mm -hmm. having this conversation mm. here at the, here at this, here under the table, mm. there's a table above us and here we are talking. Mm. Um, and the fact that we've made it to this point means that you, your consciousness and your filter of your of your brain has accepted all of everything that we both are experiencing. Mm. COVID happening, mm. uh, these wars, uh, all of these things have sort of happened and our consciousness has accepted it. So we are sort of in this moment riding this um, moment together. We could split mm. from here and I can mm. go and uh, drive my car down the street and swerve and uh and and uh something can happen and i may never be on stream again right mm. but that was our like for that brief moment mm. we were riding this 
And maybe in your reality, that didn't happen, right? Mm. Maybe in your reality, um, the, the, the cord copy or the cord that you have perceived didn't swerve off that road mm. and is still playing uh, 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 table story, right? Interesting. Um, and that's just, and that's not just like my theory or mm. your theory. That's mm. like, goes to everybody. So everybody's in chat. You're your own, um, you're your own observer in your own story, mm. which makes it seem like everybody else is an NPC, mm. which is not the case. That makes, I mean, you could think that, but it is uh, a very slippery slope when you're like, mm -hmm. well, only I matter. Um, <laughs> but what it, that, what that theory has helped me do mm. is take, take more care of myself, mm. um, have these boundaries up wherever I need them, mm -hmm. um, and, to make, and to make sure that the cameraman who's writing his own story is protected mm. um and instead of because there's a lot of times five or so years ago or 10 years ago when i started mm. streaming where i was a very much a yes man mm. for everything i did i would yes of course yeah uh -huh, i would love to yeah of course and i would never really get anything in return mm. um whether it was a co-collaboration or it was payment or anything i wasn't getting much back mm. um and it really left me with uh low boundaries and uh, me just being abused with people right. who didn't know they were abusing me mm. um, because they were in it for the world, capitalism and whatever the world mm. is, where people have to fight for their own uh, wealth or success, whatever that may mm. be, mm. Uh, where I was going, uh-huh, yep, uh-huh, because I didn't have these boundaries because mm. I was too worried about other people. Um, mm. But now that I have this like weird theory of life and the world and all possibilities happening at once, it's only the ones that we perceived the queen, the three, the two, or whatever right, right. Uh, numbers you saw out of right. those deck of cards, those, that's the life that you see. And, mm. and so I don't know, I don't know, uh, that's a theory that I've had. I don't know if there are documents somewhere where it's explained better, mm. but I just had that one day uh, during my grieving process uh, where I was like, hold on. Mm. That, that is, uh, so deja vu could be, um, with that, armed with that knowledge, mm. deja vu could be the fact that like, maybe the card is flipping, if we're back to the be lack of a better term, right? The card is flipping from one to another. I'm remembering, wait, didn't I just see that too? But now it's a six, oh. maybe it was a six, right? Mm. Where it's like, maybe the it's, it's blurring. You feel like you've been here. You feel like you saw this possibility, but that's the possibility. Mm. Or you've never been here, but you're certain you have been. Mm -hmm. Just makes you go, wait a second. It's just that mm. second where you're sort of, I feel like your mind goes up, up, up. I saw between the lines for a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like our brains, mm. consciousness, mm -hmm. has a filter mm. that filters out all of the possibilities that are happening at once. Mm. So we can only see this one dimension. Okay. Um, if that sort of wavers a little bit mm -hmm. or if that sort of like when would that waver probably from not sleeping right not resting your brain and right. uh going and then going insane right from uh hallucinations, not sleeping. So those are hallucinations. Those. exactly yeah. what are hallucinations are they other possibilities i don't know mm -hmm. um or is it your mind starting to i don't know i may just be sounding crazy but anyway no. uh this is um that's sort of like a fun theory that I've been toying with. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. when it comes to deja vu, I like to think about what is that? Right. Is that cool? Deja vu. Like now I'm thinking, what is deja vu in this theory? And can I tell a story about it? Mm. Um, and which leads me to also like Spellwind and such is Spellwind. And um, there was a lot about chaos theory and the chaos magic and um, void magic that mm -hmm. definitely reverberated from my thoughts of uh, potential quantum theory. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, deja vu is a, a thing I haven't thought about when it comes to what is that, but maybe that's what it is. Maybe mm -hmm. it's one of the slides shifting and then you seeing the card flip, going, wait, mm -hmm. what? Because it does mm -hmm. make, it is a, it, it's a jarring feeling, uh, mm -hmm. deja vu. It is, it is. And, you know, and some people just kind of like shrug it off like it's nothing, but a man is something. Because it, it feels like something, something like, every else, single what, time. What, right. It doesn't happen all the time. It's just like when yeah. it happens, you're just like, what the heck? I know I've been here. I know I've been done here this. before, I think. Right. Yeah, it's, this is so the decision I made, is it not? So the reason why I bought this up cord is because I feel like me and you are very similar when it comes to a lot of things. When I used to be an angry person, 
very mm-hmm. impatient person mm-hmm. because I would take a lot of abuse from other people. I would take a lot of manipulation and give them excuses. And then you'd bottle it up. Yeah, bottle it up, man, uh-huh. like a volcano. And I would hold it and hold it. And when people ask me, I'm like, no, nothing. Everything's fine. No, nothing. You know, and inside I'm dying. You know, when I go home, I go lock myself in a closet and scream and, 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 and wonder why. And, and found that my only solace is in the darkness because I felt like that's all that matter was to be alone. And that's the only person I would understand is myself. But do I really understand myself? Asking these all these questions. And then one day it only takes one, one, step. one little thing, one little cut, one little trigger and I'm exploded. So... For instance, I'll give you an example. And I, and I had this discussion with my wife. Thank goodness, yeah, thank goodness she's such a great example. person to be able to have these discussions with. If you pop a tire in your car, you're having a shit day. You wake up, it's just horrible. You know, yeah. you wake up, your socks are missing, and, and you can't find your work shirt. You're going to be late to work. And then when you get late to work, you know you're going to get yelled at by your boss. Your boss is a, a bucket head. You, they, you, don't get, you haven't had a raise in nine years, and you, all you do is just bust your hump, and nobody notices. The only time yeah. people give you some kind of respect is when you mess up because then they'll talk to you otherwise they don't care for you all these things are going through your head and going through your mind traffic's horrible right yeah you pop a tire you're like god this is all i need why me why did the universe choose me to f with today right yeah. then once you get your you know once the the guy that comes to do your tire you do your own tire it takes you about an hour and a half you got black stuff all over your shirt and shit and you realize you you, you forgot to call your boss to let him know what happened you just know well it's probably gonna be the last day at work I'm tired of this. I just want to just don't want to be here anymore. Then you're driving down the road and you notice there was a 10 car pileup. Eight people died. It could have been you. Yeah. So now I've taken the thoughts of in my mind. I know that went kind of dark, but I'm just saying um, I needed to have patience was the first thing I worked on. Yeah. Not patience with other people so much, but patience with myself. I realized that I was damaging myself because I wasn't giving myself the chance to heal from past progressions because all I would do is hold it in and it would manifest and fester, right? You want to be a nice guy. And yeah. so you just hold it in. Just hold it in. And I said, you know, yeah. I can't do that. I got to let it out. I got, first of all, I got to either find someone to talk to, talk to about this or I need to slow down. So I just chose to slow down because yeah. uh, every didn't work for me. And I'm not saying that it, it, I'm pretty sure it does wonders for a lot of people, but it didn't work for me. And I just didn't find my right edge in there. It took three times, still didn't find it. But yeah. fourth time could be a charm. But my whole point is, Cord, is that when I learned to slow down and start realizing, like, event A happened, and yes, it may suck, but man, if it prevented me from going to event B, which is the worst outcome, yeah. I should just be thankful for this moment yeah. of just being able to breathe and, and, yeah. and take a breath. So even with when I talk now, I take breaths. You know, it has really changed my life to think in that mm-hmm. factor. Then I was like, Parallel universes, deja vu, whatever theories that may come, they all kind of make sense in their own little way. Of course. I don't want to be looking out of, I don't want to have an out of body experience with myself to tell myself, man, you should have just sat down and breathed for today, man. You going the extra mile has led your heart to have palpitations and, and, and have these weird things happen. You're so young, you should have just took time. I don't want to go back, you know, if, if we have a way to go back and talk to ourselves or, or view ourselves like interstellar right. type stuff, then I don't want to look at it like I really wish I would have. Right. So hearing you speak, I was just like, man, this is these are things that you have put together in your very complex brain because we have very complex brains that we'll never be able to fully unlock really um, in our lives. Our there. lives are so short. Right? I'm getting there. I'm unlocking yeah. it. You think? Yeah. OK, I like that. I like that. But the thing is, this is like, closed off for a lot of years. But yeah, I'm getting there. Yeah. Yeah. You being able to take those responses and be able to answer that question shows how much you've grown. And I'm mm. proud of you because you. at the end of the day, this life is so complex. It feels so long and daunting, but it's so short. Man. Yeah. And to be able to like have realizations like that, sometimes we need to actually sit down, no matter what we think people think, how crazy we sound, we need to have these realizations with ourselves because at the end of the day, the one that matters the most is you. Yes. And I'm loving the fact that you took the time to acknowledge you very yeah. proud of you for that so i want to thank congratulate you, you for that yeah thank absolutely you. and thank you for entertaining the question yeah um so yeah. with that <clears throat> we went through some very hard times and um i think it's because we're go 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 we don't take time to really like sit down and think about things um 
I don't want to go down the road of COVID too much because, you know, that's been a topic on the show a good bit. And people, we, yeah. we all know that it wasn't a great time. Mm-hmm. Now that we're not outside of it. I haven't done this yet. We're not outside of COVID. Like, everyone thinks yeah. that COVID ended. <laughs> like like, yeah, like no. a miracle to, happened. Yeah, I went to a festival. I went to a music festival this weekend and yeah. I came home going, I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. <laughs> I was in a pool this weekend. I'm going to be sick. Oh, man. I haven't, I'm not sick yet. Thank but, goodness. But Thank like, goodness. I, but like, I am just like, there's, I'm in a mass spreader event. There's just like, it's it's still ingrained where we're still like. There. Yeah. yeah. And we, and we should take wearing. caution. I, I still wear masks yeah. when I go out to big public events. I should. Yeah. Where I don't. Yeah, but yeah. I did wash my hands a lot. And, and I did shower yeah. after the pool. But oh, like, yeah. Like, you should. Anyway. Yeah. Just these things. But, you know, these things are happening. So how are you coping with the new cord now? Because self-discovery is great and all, but man, how do you tame the beast, so to speak? Like, you know, some people yeah, just feel like, I feel great. I want to go out and do things like jump out of a plane now. And like, you know, right. I want to experience life so fully. How do you pace yourself with this journey you made? I think that's exactly it, is I'm pacing myself. Mm. Um, I, um, it's, there's a, uh, there's a lot of things, which, which, which sucks, is the ADHD brain, where it's like I start a billion different projects and never finish any of them. Right. Um, where that's always happening. Um, I have like three or four different shows and uh, RPG games I want to do. Um, that I just haven't been working on because I've been working on the sword or I haven't, I guess what, I started a, a helmet project mm-hmm. in the garage and like, um, or hey, I started Mortal Online 2 and I'm doing this and I'm doing, I'm, I'm uh, relearning how to play the game and I'm making cool movie content. But then again, like, when, when did I send out that video? It's like, I didn't. Uh, mm-hmm. When did I finish that helmet? I didn't. Uh, when did I, um, I, I, I flooded with ideas, mm-hmm. flooded with starts of projects mm-hmm. and I can never finish them. Um, is that okay, and Ford? Is that okay? That I don't finish them? Yes. Yes, it is. I like it's it. hard. I like it. Uh, yeah, it's hard, but it is okay. Mm. Um, it isn't okay mm. when you live in a capitalistic society where yes. you need to make money and co- content creation uh, is how you make money. Yes, sir. That's where it isn't okay. But mm. it is okay for me. Mm. Um, take away the, 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 the system where I, I should be uh, grinding away and making money, mm. take away, take that away, it's fine. Mm. I'm having, um, I went to New York City and I lived in New York City for a bit um, mm. with uh, my ex fiance who didn't work out, mm. um, which is great because it brought me to where I am now. Okay. But uh, I moved home because I tried to, uh, this, is, this is something that I'm learning and discovering. Mm. My partner and I, um, talk about this a lot where we try to make sure we don't endure uh, uh, and like don't endure tell me what's happening right mm. like I don't want you to just try to shoulder this burden or there's something that you are going through and you want to uh, uh, just it's fine it's fine I got this well mm. just tell me what's happening you don't need to try to be tough uh, here good old communication yeah good old communication yes. and um, it starts with not with letting yourself not endure mm. um, and where the hell am I going with this? The uh, In New York, I was enduring after I broke up with her, um, mm. different partner. When I broke up my ex-fiance, I lived in the apartment for a year. We just signed the lease and then she, we, she uh, left. Yeah. So I was like, well, I don't, I can't afford to leave my copay. Right. I couldn't afford the apartment either. But anyway, I stayed because I was enduring. Mm. Um, and I finally, when my lease was up, uh, I cried to my parents and they said, come home, get a full belly because you weren't eating. Uh, come home and uh, just we'll see what happens and just and and recuperate here. Mm. I was like, okay, and I've been here ever since, um, right. which is a lot of recuperation. Yeah. Um, I'm learning a lot um, about myself. Mm. So like, there is a moment where um, if I wasn't in the place where I am, where I can have a roof over my head, right. and I can have a place to plug in my battle station, um, and I can have a room that I put a bunch of knickknacks on. Uh, and I have the space to make a, a Cthulhu helmet, um, then it wouldn't be okay. Mm. But I am very fortunate in the fact that I have the support in my family to let me discover yes. what it is that makes me tick, what mm. it is I like. Mm. Um, I have a couple of ideas. Again, I have um, a couple of ideas for uh, some coat hooks. Okay. hilarious that i actually i was telling my i was showing this to my therapist earlier because therapy is good and everyone should get it but uh 
I was noticed my therapist earlier about like these these coat hooks I made, mm. uh, and that are just made from some bent railroad spikes, okay. which is super cool, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was going to. My idea was, hey, I will get a bunch of stock ready, and I will go and do some farmers markets and things like that as well, mm. just to sort of, you know. Um, Follow the dopamine because ADHD is going to be all over the place. Right. Just if you lean into it, it's fine. Some days, mm -hmm. if I want to, like on Tuesdays, go to a farmer's market and be a, a farmer's market stand owner, great. And then on Thursdays, I want to stream, great. Fridays, I want to forge, awesome. Mm -hmm. Like that's probably mm -hmm. a good way for me to structure my chaotic life. Mm. Um, but exploration is where I'm at. And mm -hmm. trying not to endure New York. Mm -hmm. When I was in New York, I was enduring. I wanted to be an actor, so I was enduring. Yeah. Um, the same, even like, and, and in the Quiet on the Set, that documentary about Nickelodeon that came, all these kids were enduring uh, because they were trying to, because they knew that there would be at some point a better break for them. Waiting and, uh, on the Disney one. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and that's going to be, and, and this is Disney's not going to make one. Um, yeah. And, uh, but the, I don't know. It's just my communication and not enduring. Like stopping yeah. for a moment, being like, "Wait, I don't need to hold this." As soon as you start to stop enduring, that's where you can start to then identify what you like, what you don't like, where yes. your boundaries are. Yep. Uh, boundaries are a huge deal. If you don't have any boundaries, you're just gonna be walked all over. And that's where mm -hmm. I was for a lot of mm -hmm. the beginning and start and uh, same. Like uh, for my, a lot of my career, until I met Table Story. Like until mm -hmm. I, I'm about to be like, yeah, Table Story's great. I love Table Story because of the amount of the, they are great. But I mean, not because I'm on the show right now. Uh, if this wasn't uh, a, a Table Story show, I would still say the same thing. I mean, like, it's Table Story. Uh, the group of people and my friends that I've made here have been so uh, supportive and um, such a fantastic, loving group of people mm. that have helped me understand that I'm not alone in this industry uh, trying to do what it is that I'm passionate about and love and trying to uh, live my life the way I am. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's been great. So, um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the hell I, what the hell I was rambling about. No, it's fine. It's fine. You, you, you definitely answered the question. I mean, like-minded people having them around is, is, is a beautiful thing. I, I, the a common theme here is a lot of people say that table story has saved my life. That, you know, that's a, that's a heavy duty compliment, man. Yeah, you know, I mean, we've I've had people come to me and streamers. I'm pretty sure uh, people yeah. that are listening out there, content creators, uh, actors, or whoever, is you have people yeah. that ran you randomly write you letters and send you emails saying, "Hey, you saved my life." And you're like, "Whoa, what?" That, yeah, it's it's great to get happy about, but boy, is it a doozy. It's because, yeah, like wow, now I have pressure I didn't know I had. Right? It's like I affect yeah. people's lives. Holy crap, my actions really have consequences. Yes, they do. Yeah, everyone's yeah. actually you don't even have to be a content creator or or, or yeah. an actor or anybody a celebrity for the fact that your actions it could be one thing that you say whether yeah. it be good or bad i i, I want to squash the idea of the consequences being bad there's good consequences right. as well you know of course. Of course. um but like saying for instance like every morning my wife wakes up and i'm not just saying this to her but i say wow you're really beautiful because when she wakes up i'm just like holy crap dude why how am i married to this goddess like I, I literally yeah. say it all the time um you know and that makes her freaking day and i don't do it to make her day i do it because i'm like holy crap what am i doing waking up to this goddess every morning um but that is a good consequence bad consequences yeah. Yeah. you know someone you saying like hey how how bad do i look in this scarf right now i'm like hey it's, it's okay it's just okay yeah oh, it's okay is my head too small is my like neck you? too thick yeah like you know exactly. it's, <laughs> and unfortunately yeah. online in society we, we, we've been talking about this and, we, and i kind of want to dip into this is that society brands us as what we should be like there's a path that they they when, when yes. we're kids we're innocent right we're walking around we're seeing all this stuff in the world and everything is like it's like being in a fantasy it's like being in a ctrpg it's like wow look at that everybody Clouds has a, a dragon whoa look yeah. at that and people are like no it's not it's a cloud that's water you can drown yeah. that's yeah. fire it will burn it only destroys it doesn't create Not the magic you know? it's yeah diminished right right and 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 society has painted that and we followed it like robots we've been tuned yeah. we've been sat down and talked to that this is right and what's wrong and what's wrong is you know vice versa but breaking the mold cord where did it start for you to break the mold and I'm not talking about just with, you know, your your recent door openings. 
Yeah. You started, you're unlock a lot of us here. You started TTRPGs and experienced that. You had a father that was, or that is, excuse me, um, into all that stuff and got you into yeah. it. A lot of us didn't experience. He wasn't super into it. He was a sports guy. Okay, well, he I mean, did, the fact yeah, that he even, it, yeah, it that you even had supportive. it available to yeah, you. Exactly. So a lot of us were like, damn, we wish we had that when we were younger. Yeah. How, like, what, when, when, when did the force mold break for you to be like, you know what? People may seem this to be weird, but I love it. And I'm going to continue to do this. You know what? Um, I want to be an actor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that happened. Uh, there was, we did. I was probably probably around the same age for like 9, 10, 11, 12, mm. that, you know, those years. Um, there was a summer camp uh, at the local high school and mm. they had some sort of acting thing, um, an acting like uh, class or block or mm. whatever it was for the week. And um, the one of the main, like one of the starting days, I like to be like, oh, let's warm up, blah, blah, blah. They had a bunch of costumes and they laid a bunch of costumes out. Um, and there was this green like suit i don't really remember much about it but it was being like ugly green and i remember getting up on stage wearing that ugly suit and just made up a character that i think was a wizard that made up a toy he like invented the toilet or something i don't know it was funny for a nine-year-old but like yeah, yeah. the 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 people in the in the lecture the class the camp were laughing and loved it and then and they just made the whole thing up and then when i got off stage like you're really good at this and I was like, what? And they're like, you're a really great actor, blah, blah, blah. You didn't, you didn't laugh, you didn't da, da, da. And I was like, okay, cool. And as an ADHD boy mm. growing up in the 90s, yeah. there was a lot of things that yeah. uh, are spoon-fed to you that you can't do. Yes. Like math or any schoolwork. Uh -huh. So, um, or like reading, even though I, I'm a good reader, I just couldn't pay attention. But like... Mm told all the time that I couldn't or needed help with something. And then finally at a summer camp being told that I can be an actor uh, was when I started ah. going, that's for me. Um, and uh, I didn't, did, not, did not have a good um, relationship with uh, academics growing up. Not the fact that like, I was a troubled kid or anything, far from it. I, I needed to be the goody two shoes because I was like, I'm, I've got like a very big conscience and I would never want to like hurt anyone or be in trouble one time i got in trouble and cried but like when it comes to academics i was never great um uh there was maybe a couple of things i was okay at but like mm. uh, math hated now in my 30s and like finally feel like i grew up uh i'm like i could do math and i could like quickly do math stuff but like i couldn't when i was a kid mm. because of just the structure of the world and of course the structure of academics back then it did not tailor for kids who had adhd which there are more of than we thought um and but yeah that was when uh as like an adhd boy um mm. them telling me you can do this is when i went okay that's my role then yeah because we grew up learning that there were roles like my dad owns a my dad owns a sports store yeah. my dad's a coach mm. my dad's a sports guy that's his role my mom works in an office my mom does um my mom works in office at the school my mom also is a uh the, the costume mistress at the school so she's this she's a school person yeah. so like there was like this intro like this um very integrated roles set in society mm. so at me at a young age like i guess i'm an actor that's me then you can be whatever <laughs> we want that's me i'm an actor yeah um and like now i when i act i'm either streaming and I'm yeah. role playing in a game that doesn't have role playing like Star Citizen or right. Mortal and right. I role play at people or uh, or I'm in a show mm -hmm. um, and uh, like, a, like a table story show or my show that I have on Fridays with the Trooper uh, SJP is we've got these um, and like that I'll always have acting yes and, and which makes me feel nice because like I'll always have acting acting will always be in my blood but I'm not acting Acting is in court, um, like ah, I, forging, okay. yes. writing. Like that's yes. a thing too. Writing wasn't a thing when I was a kid. Right. I just couldn't. I knew that I wanted to. One time I wrote a book. I wrote like a couple of pages in a draft book. You know those, those like uh, those compact, those um, composition notebooks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I was writing like a little bit of pages in that, and I showed it to my dad, and he's like, "This is really good." And I was like, "Wow, thank you." It was a lot of fun to write. I don't know what it was about. It was probably some spinoff of Diablo two. Mm. Um, and uh, I really liked it, and I 
got into DMing and because no one else would. Uh, mm. And that's when like my improvisational mind mm. because of that monologue when mm. I was nine about wizard, toilet wizard. Uh, and then yeah. also growing up, trying to make things up on the fly to mm. at, bypass school. Uh, and then also um, creating these narratives for mm. people to enjoy like Dungeons and Dragons. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, and then now like writing with um, like lately with Spellwind and trying to figure out how to integrate this system or this setting and trying to create a new system. By the way, I'm writing a new tabletop system nice. and I'm very excited about it. Mm. I just need to figure out what rules and mechanics I want for it. Mm. But it's exciting. But I have the brain to do that now. Yeah. Like I didn't, like when I was, when I, five, ten years ago, I didn't have a fucking full, full grown cerebral cortex yet. I was still. Mm. Like a uh, uh, man child, 20 year old, uh, who, or 20s year old, uh, that didn't quite understand the potential of what living was. Mm. But now I understand what ADHD is. I understand how my brain thinks. And I understand what my brain needs to think, uh, like go out to the garage uh, and forge, or, uh, you know what, just take. You know what I learned recently? Mm. Is. Um, and I don't know if this is the reason, but you know, in Hitchhiker's Guide Galaxy, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where they're like, what's the answer to the, the what's yeah. the meaning of the world? And they say 42. Yep, yep. 42 is the amount of time, the percentage of the amount of time you should spend resting. Mm. So if you're to avoid burnout, you should spend 42% of your time not doing whatever that is. So even mm. if you're, so if I'm like, like what I, I'm currently sort of burnt out of Star Citizen right now. Yeah. That's because a month or two ago, I was burning the candle at both ends, playing each and every day, doing like eight hour streams of role play, blah, blah, blah. And it was awesome. But I ran into a wall very quickly because mm -hmm. I didn't have that 42% of resting time. Mm. Um, so, uh, and this, that sort of helps me when I'm like, how much time do I need? 42%. And I just think of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm. Um, so, yeah, just try. Everybody out there, try to make that forty-two percent, even if, and not sleeping. Sleeping doesn't count. Mm. Um, it's like have that time. Like even today, I was like, man, I really got to go out to the garage and work on this candle stand. And I was like, you know what? No, I spent all day yesterday fixing a new uh, blower into the window for the forge or for the for the uh, workshop. I'm gonna rest a little. So I played a little mm. bit of video games. But yesterday, I was like, I played this video game all day yesterday. I'm going to go out to the garage. So it's like, I need, you need to find those balances of where that 42% of resting mm. is going to be, which is nice. People in this industry who need breaks, find something else away from the computer. Yeah. Um, that is your, and even video games sometimes doesn't really count unless you have something like a Steam Deck, which my girlfriend bought me one recently has been game changing and life changing because now I can enjoy games without going, should I stream this? Uh, yes, this is for yes, me, yes. you know, like I can't yeah. stream it. This, Little game is for me. Mm -hmm. I can enjoy Enshrouded without going, you know, it'd be great if I role played in this. I'm yeah. enjoying Enshrouded or uh, Mortal Online where I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go and play whatever because I'm enjoying it versus I need to create content for this. Because mm. that's, that is the, the society and system that we are a part of where we're yeah. like, we see a video game and we go, ooh, man, I can't wait to show all of my community that I can play this game. Yeah. Versus being like, when am I going to play this for me? What are games that I really want to play mm. for me these days? Yeah, that's that's a, that's like, a very good idea. You Steam know, deck is pretty good. It's very good that you said that because at the end of the day, it's like kind of had this conversation on my stream once. Is that you know everyone's like, I'm so sick and tired of half-ass games coming through the market. I'm like, wait a minute, half-ass games has always been in the market, buddy. Like this is nothing yeah. new. It's just yeah. that you accepted the fact back then because you were playing a game to do what? Have fun. You're not having fun anymore because you're too bad. You're too busy criticizing everything and, yeah. and relating and comparing everything and in competition. Yeah, go when back you, and look at old games. That yeah, you were when cool. you got a yeah. disc, that game probably had so many. But uh, Skyrim. Let's just talk about right. that. When it released yeah. on the Xbox 360, people waited up. When all you got night. the disc, it full of bugs. Yeah, full of dude. It's it was the, bu bugs. the buggiest game ever. But people yeah. did not care. I played that thing all night, all day, all night, all day. My horse walked backwards through a waterfall. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah, my horse climbs <laughs> vertically up a mountain. It's yeah. not supposed to do it, but I did it anyway. When yeah. I when a when a giant hat hit my body, I flew. It space. was funny as hell. Yeah, exactly. Just celebrate the bugs. Celebrate you them, know? and people are yeah. still to this day buying that game for twenty five dollars, bro. It, it's been. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bethesda is uh, the lights are still on because of Skyrim. And it's just yes, because correct. people enjoyed the game. And when they pick it up again, they say, man, remember the time where I got hit by that giant ass blew up in his face? You know, it's yeah. all about those nostalgic memories. So you brought something up that's very interesting to me. You know, you 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 you're very vocal about having ADHD, but uh -huh. Lord, the funny thing is you find ways to solve that issue. I see your brain working in it while you talk. I, I'm an I'm I'm observer. I love observing mm -hmm. people. Like, that's my thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably why I'm an artist. They're called voyeurs. Yeah, because, yeah, when I would sit, I would sit on a bench and watch well, people watch all day mm -hmm. and then go home and draw them. And then they would be in the comics. They would be in the books. You know, when I worked in comics, those people were there. Yeah. I knew how a lurking person that had weight on their shoulders, like they had a really bad day, how they felt. I knew it because I could just see it. And now I can like read people. So when it comes to you speaking, you're you're, you're calculating while you're speaking. And when you say something that you don't mean to say, you acknowledge anxiety. it vocally. Yeah. I think that's great. I think that's great. I think the fact that you you are coming up with solutions to take time for yourself and to find out what's really for me and what, you know, and not forgetting the importance of okay, I know I need to make money, but I can't make money if I'm not happy and if I'm not happy, I'm not living. If I'm not living, what's the purpose? exactly you brought up a very you, you bring someone up constantly and i'm and, and, <laughs> your girlfriend um dealing with adhd and dealing with all these these things that's going through your brain and self-discovery how has that played a role in having a relationship it's been amazing mm. um because this this moment in my life where i am learning to communicate and mm -hmm. i'm learning to not endure i'm also learning and more confident in myself where i can communicate um my needs like like um yes. there are times so um i haven't met anybody who has had more adhd than my girlfriend um i haven't oh. met anybody that has had more adhd than me really uh, yeah wow. so okay. um so it's been really wonderful being like and watching and seeing like we both know how each other's brains work mm. and that's also really helpful um and like i feel nowadays i feel because uh, over the weekend um we we figured out that uh, her medication is a double mine. So mm. I, in my brain, go, okay, so when I'm feeling something, she's feeling it double. Um, oh, so, interesting. Uh, so that makes me, that puts, that lets me understand the amount <laughs> of almost uh, unimaginable anxiety that she may be feeling, or the unimaginable amount of paralysis that may, she may be feeling, or the, the unimaginable amount of uh, decision fatigue that she may be feeling, or whatever the, whatever the case, or whatever the ADHD symptom. Um, Bex is there. She is in the chat. Um, and uh, she, hi, hi there. And uh, hey. she, um, she's great. She's been, she's amazing. And I'm not just saying that. She's, it's been so fucking uh, I'm so happy great for you, to understand uh, mm. each other, uh, ourselves, uh, and uh, it's been, it's been awesome. So, mm. uh, but in this, I feel like if I wasn't in this zone of. Uh, or in this space and stage in my life to understand and like let myself have mm. boundaries or let mm. myself have these uh, like I need to communicate this really confusing thing right now I'm feeling right now or hey I'm feeling pretty anxious or hey honey I don't have the spoons for this today um, spoons being that social energy that you just anyway so like that's usually what we say a lot if um, yeah like one time she was like hey do you I, I've had an idea let's let's uh, let's uh, do some paper cranes tonight and I was like I don't know how to do origami like, that's okay i'll teach you and i was like okay and then at the end of the day i came over and she took out the the, the paper and she was ready to fold it and i was like i don't think i have the spoons for this mm. sorry she goes that's like, that's fine oh that's okay i'll just do it and she did it herself but it was just it was enough of communication yes. for us to still have those boundaries and not have to endure because i could have been like okay great and then yeah. sat down and then just endured but then that would have been something that i would have bottled up yes subconsciously it ruined it for both of you and later at some point, if she's like, hey, I just, excuse me, ooh, I tripped and I bumped into you or whatever it is. And then it got me uh, annoyed or triggered me for whatever reason it is. Not saying that bumping into me ignores, uh, annoys me, but like whatever it was that would trigger me, maybe right. that's when I would trigger and snap yeah. because I've already bottled something away. I've tucked yeah. it away because I've endured. So um, it's hard. Like communicating is very important. Not enduring is uh, hard, but it is very important. So like when mm. someone is... Um, and, and it's not like, hey, honey, you're annoying me because that's never been a thing. Um, but it's like, hey, I'm just having a moment where I'm overstimulated or, yeah, hey, this yeah. is 
uh, a thing where, because one, hey, you're annoying me. That is, uh, puts a lot on, on them. And what are they going to do about it? Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, that. that isn't fair. Yeah. Um, but also like, I'm overstimulated and that's why I am feeling annoyed for whatever. Mm -hmm. And just sort of like changing the perspective about your communication, about your perception versus this is what I'm feeling from you that may uh, helps a lot. So just like mm -hmm. my, it's been great. Like I said, um, awesome. the way, the fact that she has ADHD with me makes us sort of understand how we both think um, and um, we both can sort of look at each other and understand what each other are feeling about a certain situation mm. without needing to um, do a lot of explanation. Mm -hmm. um, it's been great. It really has been. And I feel like I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to find someone so special without being able to be in this mode. Um, mm. You know, where it's like I would have been um i we would have been we, we we this never would have made this no i would never have been with her if i didn't have these moments of honesty in emotional honesty uh and yeah it's just been great and like it's also been not just from me, it's a lot of discovery also and from her, for her being able to be like, okay, I need to communicate with you what I'm feeling, like, please do, because I'm doing all this, I'm communicating, it, take your time, I know it's hard, but, yeah. and then she will, and then, and then we have a much better night, like, we haven't fought, and that is, it's been almost a year, it'll be a year in June, oh, and we haven't fought, thank mm. you, and I, every other relationship I've been in, there's mm -hmm. been at least a tough, a tussle or something, of just, and it's probably communication. Mm -hmm. Because, like, typically it is probably me, where I would just be like, everything's fine. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, I'll just and just sit on it, and then uh, later it'll it'll bubble. Cascade. But yeah. yeah, it's just been it's been amazing. Um, That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, so. It's interesting you say you haven't had a, a fight or two. Hopefully, you have some bump bumps in the road, some bump heads. I don't know. I feel like sometimes those things, as much as we hate them, they're they're very helpful. Um, right. But is hey, communication is is key, man. I mean. Yeah. A lot of the problems, a lot of issues that people have with each other are just things in general because it hasn't been communicated well. Right. Um, and we are built off of social and communication and, 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 and interaction, you know, of yeah. any of any type. So that's yeah. good. McCoy. I'm very, I'm very happy for you, man, because, you know, it seems like things have been kind of like. A knot, a web for you, and you're starting to start. You're starting to like pull that knot apart and figure out like untangle, yeah, yeah untangle yeah. things and figure things out. And it's Always really fun. nice to see, dude. I, I you know, yeah. and I feel like, and I'm not. This is not a brag for the show, but I'm so happy that I was able to do something like this because I would have never known this about you, and I don't think people would have never known this about you. I don't think I would have felt like you know what I can go to court about moments and talk to him and not feel like I'm throwing something on him because I know he'll understand because now I know what he's been yeah. through or I can go to Elspeth and talk about things and I know that she's going to if it's a, if it's a tough subject I know she's going to accept it and, and work through it with me and these are things that I wish people would do because me and Meyer had a talk we, he was on the show for season one and we had a talk about and we really hate when people come to us and they've been in, you know, in person and just like, hey, you're such a nice guy and this, that and the other, we should do things together and you're like, yeah, yeah. And then when they don't show up <laughs> you know yeah. or they don't take the time because either they have anxiety about it or they feel nervous so they don't want to step mm -hmm. on anybody's toes but it's like if and, and i said meyer that's good and dandy but it takes two so yeah. it's on us as well true but both if both of us are feeling like we can't we don't want to bother each other there's no communication happening so it'll never 100%. be a thing yeah yeah it, it, someone has to be uncomfortable in those situations yeah. or or don't and or then both be can be uncomfortable at least yeah we communicated. So now I'm so glad I'm getting to know you, know you, because I feel like even during the shows, I immediately had a connection with you. I knew I knew we were going to be like had great chemistry. Also, like we didn't have philosophical deep conversations uh, in the green room. Right. right <laughs> or the right. 10 minute break. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. So it's great. So I want to transition. I know we've been hitting on some hard things. And, um, you know, as a recap for anybody that wants to ask or questions, please, by all means, post those questions in our discord. That's a table story public discord that is the under table I mean, excuse me under the table thread uh, hashtag under the table if you can't find it, you can post that anywhere and then click it and then go there um and you can ask questions to court and he will answer them at his 
convenience okay so i mean just post the questions and there will be a long answer there if he wants to and if not he'll tell you like eh, i don't really want to i don't have the spoons for it as he still says so um definitely go for that and also make sure you check out his stream and go there but let's transition into something that we both have a very very big love in and that's improv so yes funny thing is is coming into table story uh my first show was forbidden west i think it was called yes yeah. or something of that nature or was it Forbidden lands i'm so i'm forbidden so, lands. Forbidden, i think it's forbidden lands yeah i'm so forbidden happy you, you're having issues with titles too because yeah because like, it's like man it's been so long yeah. <laughs> like silas on dawn of mm. dawn on dawn was in the title i don't know I'm yeah yes i am yeah, right, forbidden yes. lands thank you for the confirmation yeah. and um you know i wasn't supposed to, i mean i was supposed to be on the show from the start but i thought it was a time conflict and i forgot that there's time zones those things are those things yeah. exist and uh, i was like oh i can actually make these that's really after work and i got on there and it was interesting because i was coming from i was not coming from a ttrpg background i was coming from Thank an you. acting background trained acting background so when i went into this i was like i'm i'm acting again yay this is what i want to do mm -hmm. and i was just like oh mechanics sure anyway i want to act <laughs> you know um so yeah. being on the show with you in um uh, rhyme with frost maiden mm -hmm. was a breath of fresh air because i felt like i had someone that understood what i was trying to do make a layered mm -hmm. character make a story have relationships make sure that the characters are having chemistry and vibing together not just two people just playing a character Right. um and because i did teach rpgs scenes. right yeah. right yeah so what have you brought in from your wanting to be an actor and then all those experiences to your adhd to your you know problems have you brought any of that into your characters and you found a way to deal with that stuff or you just kind of separated yeah. yourself yeah run this is, and i've said this before mm -hmm. run the character run mm -hmm. um no, it, 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 run is really a, a great character of mine for a run lot of is reasons. from run is from gone gone okay. um so to get the audience to know yeah i was going through uh when i mentioned in the beginning of the episode right. or at the beginning of the session i was going through mourning a lot of that time was uh spent uh delving into marijuana ah, uh, yes. and run was my way of navigating addiction. Oh, wow. Uh, yes. So um, it is a, and like, I, I, I look back at it and I go, wow. That mm -hmm. is, uh, like, I was, I'm very proud of the character. It was a lot of fun. I really loved everything about it, but it was a really personal character that I did not mm. mean for it to become so personal. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it definitely it helped me because like I, a lot of my role play, mm -hmm. um, I will learn something and then I will build a character about that. Mm. Um, so Run was that character. Uh, in GTA, I didn't know anything about the Yakuza, but I made a Yakuza boss, crime boss, and I learned about the Yakuza and, Yaku and Yakuza uh, traditions mm -hmm. uh, and the Oyabun and, um, and uh, what it meant when they cut off their pinkies and their knuckles and, and mm -hmm. what, that, what that ritual was. Like, I learned a bunch of stuff about that. Um, uh, I learned about uh, Ratchet Jaw, which is a quantum, or a, a Ratchet Jaw is what, uh, Breaker 1-9, we got ourselves a rubber duck, over. Yeah. Um, I learned about that when I uh, started to uh, pick up Star Citizen and become the cargo hauler Bear Black. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I always have sort of a thing that I want to learn about, and mm. I highlight that in my characters. Um, so like, um, like elves, I don't like elves, but like I would play an elf to mm. learn a little bit more about them. Right. Um, and the same, so that was sort of, um, run came at a time in my life where it was really good that run did come at that time. Mm. Um, and it was also really good that it played out the way it did because I was able to lay out a lot of run, uh, and what he was, and what I was sort of going through and just mm. lay it out in, and, and sort of, um, one publicly, but also like, uh, uh, um, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, portray it, no, express, uh, express what I was feeling, but put it in this character. Yeah. Um, and put it in this persona of me where that, that's where it can live. Uh, and these things I could express and these, 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 uh, voices 
uh, or not voices, these these things I can express and these uh, thoughts and feelings I have about a certain thing mm -hmm. can live with that character. Mm. Um, so, uh, and the most, I think the most therapeutic um, character I've sort of done was Run. Mm. Um, I didn't know anime or uh, Gundam or mech mm -hmm. battles uh, fighting until I played my first show here uh, in Table Story, which was um, uh, Zero Blue Orion. I was mm -hmm. like August Blue Alliance, that's not it. Zero Blue Orion. Um, and I got to learn uh, about um, just anime and the, uh, the um the direction of the how the shows were played yeah how the episodes would sort of and how the characters would, inter would interact um but yeah it was yeah i don't did i answer the question I you, did. I did. you did yeah. you did you do place like a bit of yourself in, in things that yeah i um i uh i do i feel like the best there you, you, no matter what there is you can't not no matter what character you are, or what actor you are, or whatever, you can't not place a bit of yourself and your creativity in mm. in a character. That's um, interesting. Like that's that character. That's not me. Mm. There is always going to be a, a, a bit of you in there. Mm. Um, so, like, even if it's just like, uh, I, th their thoughts. Like, maybe if it's maybe if it's just a dark way of expressing, but you still had that thought, um, mm. and. Uh, and it makes sense for that character to express it that way because that character would do that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I there, that's why when people do impressions of people, mm. it's never uh, a spot on impression, it's always a take of it's their, ah. it's their mm -hmm. perception mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. that impression, yeah. Um, versus being like, oh, that was spot on. Well, it's not entirely correct, because, yeah. Um, but. Yeah, it's, it, it's it, you can't, in my theories, you can't completely 100% lose yourself in another character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there are times, of course, that you could be a method actor mm. uh, and you can lose yourself thinking like that. But that's just, that's, it's still, you've put on that persona. Right. And it's still you navigating through this new persona of this method acting, mm. whether it be like Heath Ledger as the Joker and right. um, and how hard that was for him. Um, and um, if for those of you who don't know, Heath Ledger, The Dark Knight was really hard for him, and uh, ultimately, ultimately laid, uh, ultimately demise, yeah. ended up uh, being the reason for his um, demise and his uh, his over uh, 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 overdosing. Yeah. But the uh, people back there were like, oh, it's method acting. It's just that's how he acts. But it's like, yeah, he was still in control, though. Um, the mm -hmm. fact that like. I, I can be a method actor, and I understand I've done some method acting uh, training, um, but also um, this, even today in therapy, I was talking about uh, the, when we went, to, we went to a musical festival this weekend, and I had one too many drinks. Everything is fine. I just had a, I just had a, it was just a really awful hangover the next day. Uh, and I said to the therapist, uh, and I was like, oh, yeah, and I realized that I didn't have dinner. Mm. I was... I didn't have dinner. That's why I got so. That's why yeah. I got so drunk so quickly. Yeah, empty stomach, and then she yeah. goes, "Hold on." And I went, "You're right. I did drink. <laughs> I did drink a lot. Mm. Like me, me putting the perspective of, oh wait, hold on. I didn't have dinner. That excuses me mm. from the actions of me still drinking a lot. Mm. That doesn't excuse you still drank a lot. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I get so it. it's the same sort of thing where yeah. it's like, oh, I was method acting. Mm -hmm. But you were still in control of becoming mm -hmm. the method actor. Yes, you still yes. decided to do that. Mm -hmm. Don't put that on. Don't use that as an excuse. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's also communication and perception of how we, as like as we are grow, all growing up and learning each other and learning mm -hmm. ourselves, is like sometimes phrasing things like that. Where you're like, wait, am I making an excuse here, or is this? Because even even then, where I had that moment where I went, well, hold on. It doesn't matter if I had no dinner. I still drank. Made the decision. I still I still drank a lot. Yeah. yeah. I still it, it would have been easier if I had food. Yeah. But I did, that didn't stop me from making it and go, well mm. done. It's because I had uh, one drink and I'm wasted. No, I still drank a bunch. Mm. Um so yeah. A uh so I don't know. I um there is 
I, I believe that method acting can be a thing. I believe that method acting can be very helpful when trying to find the way or why role, right. someone, uh, why a, a character would think that way. Mm -hmm. uh, you Sometimes you need to be like, well, I gotta do a character study, and that's fine. Like I did a character study for my Yakuza character mm -hmm. uh, because I like I would watch a whole bunch of crime documentaries. I'll watch a whole bunch of a bunch of uh, Yakuza movies and just try to see if I can get in that mindset. Because back in the day, and this mm -hmm. is usually how I do um, role playing, mm -hmm. is I will go and I will play and I will sort of sniff out the server or sn the, in video games, sniff out the server like in Wild uh, or in um, Star Citizen or whatever. And then I would mm -hmm. be like, okay, what isn't on stage? What isn't around here? Right. Uh, and then I would fill that, like mm. Cooper being the being the NPC gun shop owner. I did that, or uh, even in um, back in the day when GTA was becoming huge, uh, back before New No Pixel, um, I decided to make this Yakuza character because there wasn't a serious Asian character. They were all mockeries and offensive. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, I will make a and I will make a scary one. And then that's when I realized that I'm a white guy and that's not my story to tell. Mm. Um, but uh, that is. Uh, so I understand finding a role and yeah. fitting yourself into a new place so you could understand mm -hmm. how they would think. But um, yeah, like I said, I think everybody has uh, their own take on mm -hmm. how they would do something. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I haven't really fully put myself in any character there on Table Story just because yeah. the roles I've been in have been pretty vast and in, in, in pretty set upon what they're going to do i played an alien well i'm gonna yeah. be an, an ignorant alien yeah, right. that knows his lifestyles don't know anything about humans yeah um yeah. i'm gonna play an elf that's sheltered and then just grown up a and certain way yeah where'd well i mean your, it wasn't life experience so i can tell you that <laughs> it had to have been uh i'm i'm not a racist person <laughs> no 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 i'm but saying no but but I'm but having like, a yes okay yeah. the, the, the entertain that was just a joke yeah. a bad joke but to entertain it was more of my parents. I come from, funny enough, my mom is Asian French, mm -hmm. Asian black. Mm -hmm. My dad is Native American, white black. Mm -hmm. Very strict household, only child. Was meant for greatness. Was created from gold, golden path. Walk that path. Don't steer left or right. You bring home a B, we're going to talk. Bring home a C, everything's going away. That's That was my lifestyle. And that was, Ontario did have that. He was, he was, yeah. he had a mission, you know, he was, was made that's yes. where it came from right but yeah I see. yeah but i haven't really fully poured a lot of me into a character and i want to do right. that honestly well, of course you can you can of course yeah, have yeah, the sprinklings you, um, of where yeah, things sprinklings, come right well right. The, i mean yeah. obviously because if you're the person yeah. portraying it you're gonna have something yeah you know yeah. like the, it needs to have yeah. a spine from where you were yeah, right yeah, so yeah, you yeah, have yeah, a yeah. spine of tyrael from right. your upbringing right, i have right. a spine of run from my my dealings yeah. with addiction right so it's like and then everything else can yeah you need to have that base yeah um, that foundation. So yeah, yeah. It's really interesting. Something you brought up about um, impersonations and uh, people giving their takes on it. I mm -hmm. find it very interesting, and I told you I'm a very out there intellectual like thinker. Uh -huh. Mirrors how we see ourselves versus uh -huh. how other people, anybody else sees us. What do we look like in the glass versus an eye, and how that's interpreted? How right. the brain paints the image of what you see. Right. And sometimes I'm like, do people see me as I see myself? Like, is this camera actually portraying who I really am? Is this lens picking up me? Right. Like how I visually yeah. look, do you see what I see? Do they see, see, you know, stuff like that. So in life that has made some really crippling and sometimes re, uh, uh, forged some great buildings of who I am today. But sometimes yeah. I say it's okay to wake up and not want to feel like this I felt yesterday. You know, I want to be something yeah. different today, you know? Yeah. But society tells me, no, you know, it's not okay to have emotions. You're a man. You need to go out there and hunt, you know, you need to go and, and, and eat raw meat and drink, drink eggs from the shelf, you know? Yeah. And then I'm just like, well, I don't want to be that. I, so, sometimes I want to be able to, I find it comfortable to cross my legs sometimes. Is that okay? God I'm dang sitting, it, is that I'm, okay? Yeah, my, my, my legs are crossed right now. Right, right. But my yeah. dad, sitting you know, like bless his heart. Right now. Yeah, my dad. <laughs> My dad is, 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 is awesome. I, I love him. I'll yeah. do anything for him, you know, but right. you know, he grew up totally in a very good. tough uh, household of, of, of 12 kids. Yeah. And you know, the, the boys had to be men, you know? Yeah. And the moment I said, the moment I crossed my leg, my dad was like, ah, no, 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 dad, don't do that. And I, at first I was like, gosh, what my dad is, yeah, I was like waving my yeah. dad, but my dad was protecting me from society. It wasn't him. Oh. Yeah. 
Because now we both cross the legs. It's okay. Yeah. We're like, we're just like <laughs> gonna just strip up to the minute. So at the end of the day, when we're making these characters, Cordy, we're coming on table story to bring to build these things. Do you take certain aspects that you've learned or that you see in society that you hate? And you're just like, I hate this. Do you use that as a format to be able to teach the audience like it's okay to self-discovery it's okay to believe in magic and it's okay to paint your nails it's okay to do these things because it makes you awesome because you feel like you're you or do you just go into it with for the sake of creation um can you so to simplify the this uh -huh. do you take your characters and you when you create if you're dming you're creating a story or making these characters uh -huh. Do you try to teach a life lesson to those out there that are teeter tottering on the idea that society is right? Um, or do you just go in for the sake of creativity and hope hope somebody picks something up? Well, we had an entire god king uh, in mm. in Spellwind who mm. uh, hated magic, and so yeah, I there are themes and things that like I've always been taught that art holds up a mirror to society, mm. uh, and. Um, yeah, there are characters sometimes where I'm like, that'd be a cool character. Like one time, this is just, this isn't like a, a horribly uh, in-depth life talk, but like mm -hmm. uh, over the over the summer when I was learning how to become a farrier, uh, there were a couple of times where I saw people, these farriers who weren't really horse people, but they needed to get the job done, mm -hmm. um, do things like one, like this guy, uh, the horse like kicked at him and he turned, dropped the shoe and then punched the horse in the shoulder. Oh my God. And I went, huh. And then he was like, don't do what I just did. And I was like, you got it. Uh, <laughs> and, um, but later I was like, you know what? I could totally see a big, like this guy was a, a squat man with, uh, uh, had blonde hair and like a beard. But I was imagining now this like sunbaked skin of a dwarf with a bl like long blonde beard who owns a stable, who uh. does that. Right, uh, like there's like that 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 visual mm. of now I can drop that into that 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 um uh, that imagery. Mm. Thank you for that cool little nugget. I'm gonna put that into the sh uh, mm. into a show or whatever. I can introduce this character okay. by being like uh, drop the shoe and punch the horse or whatever it was. Um, but uh, yeah, I was like, wow, that sucks. And there was a lot of things where it's like I'm not saying failures suck, but there were the people who I was like. Uh, learning a lot from yeah we're doing some things where i was like you know why are you poking the horse with the back of the tongs mm. like yeah well he's kicking at me well he's a nervous horse anyway yeah um i'm like it's a big scary animal that wants to run and you're holding it of course it's gonna want it mm. like, anyway the um but yeah exactly the grumpy uh, dwarf trying to do a job that just gave me it inspired me to make a character mm. but um like for Spellwind, it was about overthrowing a god king mm. um where uh, people weren't allowed to be themselves, the spellkin, and uh, yeah, I, uh, there were obviously. I think uh, the more I thought about it, the mm. more Evervale, uh, the city of Evervale, was America. Mm. Uh, it was this broken system mm. um, where, uh, not necessarily this, but it was this like it was this dictatorship or this uh, system where things weren't working and something needed to happen. Right. Um, and that was uh, and that was Evervale and the Evervalian Reaches, or the, where we get to see the, uh, the adventure sort of weave through, or up and down the spine of uh, Hearth. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so it's like, I do have these things, and there are tons of shows, like, still in percolating in my mind about mm -hmm. my quantum theory, um, like, plane jumpers, Right, who are jumping from one possibility of the world to another possibility of the world. Because, um, yeah, there may be tons of dimensions, but in my mind, in my theory, they're all happening at once. Mm -hmm. um, you flip a coin, both heads and tails land. But it's only the observer who is the one who looks tails. and sees the heads or mm -hmm. sees the tails. Mm -hmm. um, but also, if I flipped it, I guess this is a better example, and now we're going back to that. If I was to flip a coin and then I saw heads, and I accept that it's heads, I'm revealing to you, Technique, that it's heads. Because I've mm. already accepted that it's heads, and mm. the person that I'm talking to mm. is going to see the same result that I am. Mm -hmm. But if I showed it to you and you saw tails, and then I saw tails, because you've accepted that it was already going to be tails, mm. therefore the person that you took with you 
down this pathway mm -hmm. is the person who also saw tails mm. it's a weird it's a weird one but um there are times where i have like show ideas where i want to explore that mm. um i have um another redacted uh idea show that i want to do um with redacted uh ip that uh i want to do but i want it to be a it may fit this but also may um be a spoiler so i'm not gonna talk about it but mm. um the so like i do have like and i have like alien theories too which could be yeah. really cool and that would yeah. be a lot of fun to explore but not in a format where we talk about it here but maybe in a format where we discover it in a narrative like Dungeons and dragons or right. whatever the rpg is right right um where um because there are en more entertaining ways of talking about how the world works right than right. just not saying this is a bad format but then just blabbering about it um because uh why not take people through an adventure through the story or the mm. world that has those rules mm. in it um where you can be like mm, yeah, cool huh Okay. And that's sort of where my mind has been lately when it comes to story or world creation is mm. like what is something that i'm observing of the world mm. that i want to see an adventure about mm. or how i can show my players or show an audience or tell the story of yeah without um uh without needing to feel like i am trying to convince them of anything yeah you know? so the answer to my question is yes you do so yeah. you do in so many words, I could have worded it like this. When you create, do you try to yeah. make people think? You yes, do. I, I mean, sp yeah. spell, spell win is, is, yeah. is a very good example of you creating something to just have a person sit down and say, now, wait a minute. What if? Because to me, yeah. that's the grand prize is the what if. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, because what if can go so many ways. It could be scary, it could be great, it could be rewarding. Um, but I used to hate those books growing up. I used to hate reading the books that kind of left you. And you're like, yeah. but what like, happened? Where's to... the resolution? Yeah. For instance, I'll give you an example. Um, I'm a Star Wars nerd. Telling me you're autistic. Yeah. Exactly. Where's the ending? I need the resolution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where is <laughs> it? I need. I need a period yeah. at the end of this. Yeah. Right. Uh, the Book of Bane. I'm a yeah. huge Star Wars nerd. Yeah. Um, and if you haven't read Bane, they leave you at the end. You're just like, no, no. Yeah, is this resolved? You can't do this. Resolution? I need yeah. to know who won. Yeah. Who won this battle? And then the author is just like, it's up to you no like, sir like, no it's not no up to me. sir you, you have an answer yeah, in there yeah, yeah. it's yeah. in your yeah. mind you wrote that yeah. shit you just didn't put it in yeah, there you tell, me. tell me you know and i and, and i and now i grow to appreciate it because yeah. now yeah. i get to create a story past that yeah. that that, that reflects you think back more. into it right yeah, exactly it opens up that mind the thing that we locked off for it we're gonna just go ahead and round this back up do it the thing that we locked off due to society family members you name it has placed on us that lock and keep and, and holding the key saying that yeah this is how we're supposed to think this is yeah. how we're supposed to go through these things yeah and that's why i'm having such a fantastic time opening these locks with you because i'm just like well now i have noah that i have a person that thinks very like-minded that i can have these great intellectual conversations yeah. with and not and feel accepted and not feel like i'm being looked at weird yeah like oh weird no i'm i'm yeah. i've been yeah, i've been uh down this path of like I have a man bun and a mustache and a nose ring for a reason these days, and it's because I'm definitely down to talk about uh, philosophical stuff. No, but like I, uh, I, yeah, I've been like quantum physics and philosophical conversations have been like my jam lately. Yes, and it's like it's not necessarily any wacky, crazy me being like, "Hey guys, I've got this brand new idea. What if?" Um, but it's nice to have these conversations. Well, why not because, though? Why yeah. not be that guy? Who cares? That's true. That's You're the right. thing that You're I'm right. trying to live exactly. my life right now, Court. Yeah, that I see. Cares. I've got it inspired yeah. from you yeah. during the show. It's like who, who gives a crap if I'm the guy who that's cares? just like, what if you know? Right. Uh, you know, some people just say, what if the world is flat? Everything's flat. But I mean, what is proven is proven, well, or whatever. Yeah. But if it is in your mind, yeah. cool, bro. Whatever. Yeah, cool. What's gonna happen we'll when I go past that horizon line? Tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Don't stop there. Don't stop at the aren't world. Real. Is, yes. Yeah, so that's exactly. that's where I am. I'm I'm into the the job now of encouraging those weird thoughts. Those now. thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. So when those we tell these stories yeah, and we create these yeah. characters, I want people to say, "What if Malavik in Gatewalkers is still the small little boy that he was that yeah. was terrified that would just want yeah. to love from his mother and this big brawny body? He just takes his anger out because he's still a child." He's not the man that everyone thinks he is. You know, he's that small kid. 
I want people to think that. Or I want people to say that he matured. He's grown into what people outside look at as a monster. But what if he's more human inside than anybody is around him? I exactly. want people to make these these thoughts. They make the decision. Yeah, they make I'm the not going to tell you that because yeah. I haven't thought it's that a, far. It's a show, don't tell. Yeah, I'm right. Exactly. And the, the the fact that they thought about it, I feel like I finally won the battle that I was dealing with all my life. Is yeah. It's okay to be who I am. It's okay to have these amazing thoughts because things that aren't It's proven, okay not it's to fun. have the answers. Yes. Too. Exactly. That is also true. Like, exactly. And it, and it is okay because even that writer who wrote Bane may not have had an answer. He probably went, how do I want this to end? You know yeah. what? I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna leave it and to like, them. And then yeah. I'm gonna leave it up to them because they probably were like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. How do I want this? It can go a bunch of ways. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm not. I knew and how uh, I wanted it in. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was right. pissed. I was like, right. I want mine to be right. And he was like, yours is right. Yours is right and yours is right and yours is right. And You're of like, course, no, those... is right. And he's yeah. like, I don't have an answer because yeah. it was stressing me out for yeah. months. And then you have the yeah, Reddit people right. that's just like, this right. by studying. I'm just like, all right, guys. And then you lost the fun of it. You know, yeah, but exactly. no, that's great, Corey. I'm glad. I'm so glad we had that conversation about it. Yeah. It, it, it it really, really makes me smile yeah, because yeah, if part two is gonna be doozy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when it comes down to it, uh, when you do eventually form the schedule of your life, and and, and you've you've quote unquote figured out because Hilarious. you used a very interesting term earlier, and I took notes on this. You said mm. master ADHD. I thought it was very very interesting brave and <laughs> astute of you because how did you master trying to, i'm ADHD? trying to master it yeah. yeah uh it is well i mean i'm mastering my own right uh yes, ADHD yeah, course, affects everybody course, differently. um but like uh there is a book that is not on my shelf because i think i got it yeah i i, I, I listened to it on tape because uh. i have adhd uh, so, but the, uh, as I was working out, mm. um, because that's what the book told me to do. There is a neuro, neuroscientist, um, I forget his name, Bex has the book, because I got it, I got it for her, uh, recently, so if she's still in the chat, she can tell me, uh, who the, who the doctor is. But the, uh, book is called, uh, The Advantage, The ADHD Advantage, I believe. Mm. Um, mm. and it is written by someone who is ADHD, who is a neuro scientist or a doctor has wow. a doctorate in wow. psychotherapy or whatever so okay. like he gets he understands it yeah um and it is nice because it's a doctor that has adhd who understands and is like listen it's okay to have these things there are superpowers to your adhd yes you just need to understand uh and need to figure out how your brain thinks so when so you could unlock these things mm -hmm. um where it's like like um uh, stimulants for ADHD, like uh, r like Adderall and Ritalin, and yeah. uh, all these stimulants. Those are st uh, D Dale Archer. Thank you, Bex. Dale Archer, ADHD, uh, is the uh, the guy. Um, but they, uh, like that's that's something in itself. The fact that coffee and stimulants mm -hmm. for an ADHD brain actually levels out their brain, so they could then it it it. it lowers the static that's in our minds because we're always mm -hmm. thinking it feels like there's a uh it feels like it's TikTok, right people are just scrolling mm -hmm. through TikTok, but you can't ever land on one you like but you keep going yeah um and you get paralyzed because you've watched TikTok <laughs> for seven hours that's what it's, it's mm -hmm. like in an, an unmedicated adhd brain mm -hmm. or uh, if you're older it's like watching tv and flipping around the horn is what we used to call them just go out and flip yeah, yeah. around the horn uh, you're going around the tv and doing all the channels and nothing is on yeah so just keep doing that for the next seven hours that's what it's always like for adhd mm. and not having that 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 static but anyway um stimulants which is funny because i've been blabbering and chatting about this but stimulants uh are able to slow down the clicker the remote oh you okay stop, you could stop on a channel and go okay i actually this is the forging channel i'm going to go out to the forge or actually it's the video game channel i'm going to stream today um and uh that's what my lately what i've been doing is i come home i'll have a cup of coffee i'll have my my uh my antidepressant because i'm chronically anxious uh and then i'll have my um adderall and then i will just sort of wait and then whatever my whatever motivates me whether it's video games or whether it's to go out and work or whether it is uh to to go light a fire because we have a new fireplace and i've been heating the house with it um whatever my little project is for the day whatever my dopamine uh, wants me to go that's where i'm like that's my day today or at mm. least that's the next couple of hours yeah um i have 
also what helps me with master my ADHD is I have the short burst medication. Um, it's different from other people, and I'm not saying go out and get medicated. It's right, right, right. You and blah blah blah. What works for him? Yeah, what works for me is I have the short burst stuff, so I feel like I understand the feeling I feel like when I wake up, mm. and then I understand the feeling when I'm working on something. I take a moment and I check in and go, "What am I feeling?" Oh, I don't have that static, that like paralyzation of a billion thoughts going through and me not being able to decide on something. The the static is calm and I'm able to work. Um, and then a couple hours go by, it wears off, and I go, well, I'm going to go on TikTok for seven hours because <laughs> I realize that my medication is gone. I get to have yeah, that comparison, yeah. which helps me master my ADHD. Right. Um, but, like, I've always, I've known, I'm, I'm fortunate, and I've known since I was, like, 12 or so that I had ADHD. My sister had ADD. I had ADHD. Um, the book that I recommended, ADHD Advantage, um, tells you that ADHD and ADD are the same thing. Um, mm. Just they're two separate. Just one would show up differently and, and uh, would show up, uh, it would just show up differently and, and portray itself mm. Uh, mm. Uh, through different people and different behaviors differently. And people just thought ADHD was something versus ADD. It's all the same. And also ADHD is attention deficit disorder or ADHD, which is attention deficit hyperactive, hyperactivity disorder. None of that's correct because mm. ADHD people can focus. In fact, that is our superpower. Unmedicated, mm. we could focus on one thing and one thing at a time. So if we are having a conversation and that little under the table thing, uh, stinger just moved, right? That would have had my attention if I wasn't mm. medicated. I would have gone, blah, 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 blah. How did you do that? That is so cool. Mm. And that would have been because my I turned off my focus from you and now it's on that. Where I'm talking and then a, a fly goes by and I'm like, ooh, a fly or ooh, a squirrel. It's because that's where that like stigma of um, of ADHD not having a, an attention span goes because we can only focus on one thing at a time. Yeah. So in fact, we yeah. have hyper focus. Um, so it's not it's not a deficit of attention. We have too much attention. Mm. Uh, it is, and it's not a disorder. It's a difference. Mm. So it's like everything about ADHD or ADD is like such a misnomer throughout the years mm -hmm. um it's almost like a term that i own now because i'm like i'm mastering add because like i feel like none of those words even represent what it really is mm -hmm. um we can focus it just needs to have our attention right if we are in a room full of flickering lights and, and a bunch of stimuli good luck because every one of those stimuli are going to get our attention right and at the same time it's going to feel like that and it's going to be really overwhelming right it's right really hard for me to go to a grocery store it makes sense too much too many things that makes too sense, many people sense. too much stuff too much color too many things sounds want you to buy everything them. right yeah yeah so much i get overstimulated easily i have a pair of earplugs yeah um that are they're not here i think they're called loop earplugs so if, mm -hmm. if you're neurodivergent like me and, and get overstimulated they're great mm -hmm. i go to the mm -hmm. diner every week with uh, bex and we uh have food obviously but while we're there it is nice because i have those earplugs in and it, mm. all of that blah, 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 of all of everybody talking at once yeah. makes my brain go what is everyone saying mm. uh, there was one time recently where brad was playing a game and i was in his chat and he made the joke probably because i was in the chat but also it hit very close to home because it made sense everybody in the game all the npcs he walked into the room and all the npcs were talking at once to him and then he was like i feel like cord right now and, was like, <laughs> and that's exactly it you get it because all of the NPCs uh -huh. were trying to like tell him like, "Hey, welcome, hi, blah blah blah," and he walked into a bar and all it triggered all of the NPCs to say whatever line it was uh, at once, and it was hilarious. But that is what it was like. Where it was like, I don't know where to go. Who gets my attention? My priorities are screwed because all of my attention is everywhere all the time. Yeah. Um. So that like, and that's another thing with ADD is priorities are really hard because you're so stimulated by you have all these ideas, you don't know how to prioritize which is the best. Um, Bex has her own uh, method where she writes she has whiteboards all over the house and she writes down a list of things and she'll constantly erase them and adjust them because she visually has her um, her checklist or her priorities in literal order um, because it helps her with that. Mm. Um, so there are tons of ways to sort of, and like, like I said, ADHD shows up differently in different people. Mm. Um, and <clears throat> it's, uh, it's amazing learning um, like even, even like I'm going to use Bex as an example again, 
Uh, haha, I'm, uh, I'm, she called you on the Wiggly logo. Exactly, she's got distracted on the Wiggly logo. The, um, <laughs> but I'm going to call out Bex again, where um, I didn't do anything in, uh, in school. I feel like I didn't do anything in school. I did mm. acting, and that was sort of it. I tried to do lacrosse, wasn't as cool. I went and did uh, acting. Um, Bex has more ADHD than I do, right? We know that now from blah, blah, blah. She had all of the extracurricular. She was like Hermione Granger of her school. She has ADHD. So mm -hmm. do I. And that's just two separate mm -hmm. iterations of how it can show up. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be bothered to do things at school. She loved to do everything at school. So it's just like, it was, uh, it's just, it, it sh it's just, it's so hard in today's society and in sc schooling as it was to tailor everybody's learning style. Yeah. Um, and right now in my 30s, at the end of the show, right now I'm in my 30s and I'm starting to figure out how my brain works. Mm -hmm. And I'm theorizing how life works, but I'm identifying how my brain works, how I go through the world, mm -hmm. um, what I enjoy, what my values are, without any influence or trying to wash away the influence yes, that I yeah. had in my 20s mm -hmm. uh, in, in New York, uh, college, musical theater school. I was like the only one of the only, I was the only straight kid in musical theater class uh, growing up uh, in, in my college. So I had a lot of influences, which stirred me in a lot of, uh, in a lot of uh, yeah. conflicting and questioning uh, ways. Right. Like, am I straight? Am I gay? Am I mm. supposed to be in this, uh, in this, uh, this program? Mm. Like, so like all of these influences I have sort of had to put me here, mm. I'm starting to now be like, I'm comfortable with who I am. What was the toxic shit that happened in college? Right, that. What was the toxic thing that happened when I was in New York? Oh, right, it was that. And it's like, now I'm starting to identify mm. the, the, um, the ingredients that has made this cocktail. Right. And then I'm starting to then separate what is me versus mm. what is just an influenced garnish on this cocktail. If that makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense. And I, I think we're all still going through that. <laughs> I don't think yeah. you're alone there. I think we're yeah. all still trying to figure yeah. things. I'm still trying to figure out. I, I, yeah. I find new things about and myself I know every I'm day. And, I'm, and, I'm, yeah. and that's like another thing where it's like, I hope people see that this is normal to feel yeah. these things. Welcome to being a human. Yeah. A complex yeah. thing that no one gets. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Self-discovery is the journey, yeah. my friend. Yeah. Well, Cord, yeah. uh, it's been a, it's been great, man. We only have uh, four minutes, but I'm granting you three more minutes after that due to the the thing that we had. Um, so I, sometimes there's there's two things I like to do before I go into um, you know last minute goodbyes. Is number one, what's in store for Cord in the next? I'm not gonna say in the future because I feel like that that could be overstimulating too. I feel like that could be right. overwhelming. Yeah, like, I don't know. An essay on anything. What do yeah. you mean? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to say, what is next for Cord in the next uh, couple of weeks? Like, what, 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 what is going to be your focus coming in to you? You listed some things that you want to do and you list some things that you haven't done finished yet. What's going to be your core focus so many things. going in yeah. to try to like, I don't know, master that, so to speak. Yeah. That's really helpful uh because i'm like i've got a lot of things going on like in a couple of weeks um so in may i'm going to see like a normal concert i'm going to see a broadway show and i'm excited nice. about that awesome uh, really cool birthday presents and stuff um but uh and like that's the things that i'm like looking forward to mm -hmm. besides the events that i have in my in my schedule yeah um what you're asking cord what is cord looking forward to mm -hmm. about cord um so professionally um, when it comes to streaming, I'm yeah. trying to figure out if I want to be chord still or if I want to be mythematic. Interesting. Mythematic. Another mythematic. Flip, huh? Yeah, a, a pre brand, if you will. You know, Coca Cola did it. Why can't I? Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> the, um, I really like the Mithulu and Cthulhu yeah. stuff, and that was a cool thing. Um, and I enjoyed that. Um, but for some reason, I was losing a lot of, I, I needed to chord and yeah. there was a lot of time where i was streaming each and every day and i was losing who i was and now that uh, i've sort of done my own thing i'm starting to figure out that like chord can be chord mythematic is my gaming thing and if i want to do i could have alternate accounts i think what i wanted to do it doesn't matter what i wanted to, it doesn't matter i'm talking about it 
It doesn't matter. I wanted to do, <laughs> what I wanted to do is I wanted to do more foraging stuff on this channel, mm -hmm. uh, and then I didn't. Um, so, and if I do, I could just have an alternate account for it. And then mm -hmm. I can, this could go back to gaming or, or whatever my account is. My twitch.tv slash cord, that account can be now Mythomatic. But I, I don't really uh, know yet. I'm still sort of flip-flopping about mm. that. Um, so that's just that. Uh, when I stream again is whenever I'm feeling like it because I'm really uh, in that mode of trying to be comfortable to stream. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put on a face. I don't want to mask anymore. Yeah. Uh, and then ask uh, people to uh, support my mask. I want them to be... I want Good them point. to... I want them... If I'm having fun in something, I want them to love and enjoy and as much as I do. I don't want to be like, well, I have to stream today because the big brother says I have to. Um, mm. I, I want to be like, I'm inspired to stream. I want, mm. I'm inspired to stream this. I'm inspired to blah, blah, blah. Like, those are the things I want to do. I want I want to make streaming fun again for me. Uh, it was when I was doing Star Citizen, yeah. um, but I got burnt out of it because of that 42% rest theory. Um, and the next couple of weeks... Uh, I want to forge more. Uh, I want to really get headway into maybe this farmer's market season. Okay. Um, I like because I'm in Vermont and there's a lot of forests that come up and farmers markets are big here. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that could be cool. I feel like having maybe opening up an Etsy after the season, that's good, that's but good. like starting up, yeah, and then starting up. You know, it would be also really cool is making my own merch, but that would be really weird to be like, hey, I've got a chainmail shirt that says Mythomatic on it. No, but, um, I think that's a great idea. That'd why be dope. I know. I, I, why stop there? Because it's way too much way, much way too much time and effort, and okay. I have way too much ADD. But that would be Okay, cool. I like that excuse better than it being <laughs> yeah, weird. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Thank yeah. you. Um, uh, realistically, I wouldn't be able to. But mm. uh, uh, And so, yeah, I don't know. I want to get out to the garage more. I want to do more things for me. Mm. Um, there is, of course, always that oh, that looming capitalistic cloud of make money because yeah. everything well, in the world costs money. Yeah, um, it's kind of like a need. A need. Yeah, yeah. So, but um, so that's besides that, and that's always been there. I mean, I've been I'm an actor. I, I, I'm an actor. I've been in the role of acting since I've been 12. Yeah. So I've always known that I was going to be a starving actor. So it's not a big deal for me to be like that's always going to be there. Um, so. Uh, and that's probably also what's helped me out. There are times where I'm like, I'll be like out in the forge. I'm like, I'm not making, I'm making zero money off of this. And this isn't going to help me pay my student loans. I'm, but I'm doing this. And I'm like, I'm going to keep doing it. Good. Because, and, and like, it's, it, it, it is good, but it's hard because yeah. there are days where it's like, well, I guess I'm having PB and J again. Um, yes. and you don't, it's, but to me, I feast this is this is this is profound. I feast on on creativity mm -hmm. than my food. Mm. Um, I will eat mashed potatoes and ranch, and that'll be my dinner wow. because I'd rather enjoy my day mm. because it's about quality of whatever than it is quantity. If I wanted, if when I go out and camp, I will make amazing meals for myself because what else? What else is there to do when you're out camping? Mm -hmm. um, besides making a little project, which is eating and surviving. But um, I will plow through a meal of food just so I can get back out to mm. creating or writing or doing what it is. I feast on what makes me happy versus yes. feasting on nutrition. I um, I, nutri I, I, I I eat food because I need to. Yeah. I eat food when I'm hungry. Sometimes mm -hmm. I forget because I have ADHD. But I eat food when I'm hungry. But um, there's always, uh, I'm always, I'm, 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 out of the last five, ten years, whatever, of me doing this mental health journey, mm -hmm. I'm accepting myself more as an artist mm -hmm. than I have been just hiding. I've been a masking, I've been a masked artist mm -hmm. my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like my only way of getting my foot in the door of being an artist was on stage and yeah. then i stopped acting and i started streaming and i started editing and i started making new overlays and new emotes and i started uh and then wow court you made these emotes wow you made this overlay wow you did this holy crap and then it's like oh yeah i guess i am an artist mm -hmm. and then it's oh wait and now you're starting to forge holy crap you're like i i guess i'm an artist and it's like i feast on the art that i create yeah 
uh, versus uh, on the quality or the money that I pour onto the plate of food that I have in front of me. Um, that is, uh, it's hard because of mm. course I'm still in this house, I still have my parents' roof above me, um, but that lets me have mm -hmm. this space mm -hmm. for me to bloom mm -hmm. and to figure out who I am mm -hmm. versus uh, striving to survive in the world because I tried that already I was in New York for years and I was just I was miserable yeah. and everybody has that story I was yeah. in New York for years miserable and I hated <laughs> it until I moved away yeah. and that's exactly and I get it it's because when you're in it you've got you're enduring mm -hmm. you're blacking out you're just sort of going through it and you're living paycheck to paycheck because rent is taking everything from you mm -hmm. um, and uh, when I moved home I was like okay life is way better now that I don't have to be a part of that Mm -hmm. And now that I get to discover and explore who I am again, but, um, and the, that being said, like that has helped me make, uh, and here I am being, uh, being the, uh, in my, this is my right now, what you're witnessing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I get to, and this is a part of my mental health journey is me identifying things I'm feeling mm -hmm. right now. You're watching me try to be a host as I make a segue about Spellwind. And that is why Spellwind was able to be made is because I had the space to do it. Yeah. But um, I was about to go into that sort of segue and then I was like, hold on. Um, but yeah, and like, you know this too, as like being a, a showrunner and a show host, there is, uh, there is a lot to being you mm -hmm. and a lot to what the camera sees of you. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, there, there's always that moment or that flicker of, all right, we're wrapping up soon. What are we gonna do? do, do? How are we gonna? Do, do? So it's just, and I and I totally uh, get and understand. Um, but that's why I wanted to be like, and stand and try to give us a give us a segue back. <laughs> but I thought it was important if I highlight it in a way that uh, oh. was healthy. But, you did it. You did it perfect because typically we end with, what would you tell people? or your younger self or other people out there that are struggling with things, you know, a, a life lesson that you learned. And I think yeah. you wrapped it up very well. Um, uh, one thing that I will hop on before we go to take your, time. your call yeah, outs. Take your time is, and healing. Yeah, take your time and healing. Yeah, take your time, as long as it needs. I thought it was gonna be a year. And yeah. here I am like six years going, I, I, I don't think I, I'm ready I, for the world yet. Yeah, I think I think yeah. healing is, is, is a lifelong journey. I think it's something that we, we, we're always taking, we're, we're, we're men and women and, and whatever you identify uh, yeah warriors of battle in of life yeah. and we take scars and uh we all heal in different ways in that but one thing that i like that you said and um and then we'll get into where they can find you is the fact that you said you feast off your creativity and you can eat mashed potatoes and it's fine but you know what cord i i i i, I like to say i i f that so to speak or i <laughs> i vibe with that because you can be a billionaire eating the most, yeah. the, 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 the best cooked Gordon Ramsay or whoever cooked it, yeah. filet mignon. And if you ever yeah. tasted it, the most juiciest thing. So if you're dealing, if you're not happy, that's going to taste like it came out of a microwave. Yeah, yeah it might as well be. Might yeah. as well. But if you're happy and you're feasting off of life and your creativity and self-discovery and all these things that you've been loving, you know, you got somebody that loves you, that cares for you, you have parents that love and care for you, if you're in an environment where you're healing, how mashed potatoes is going to taste glorious, bro. It's golden. Yeah, that's exactly it. Fits his, it fits this role because yeah. we only eat to get full at the end of the day. Right. You know, take care of us. But and I got to do it again tomorrow. You got to do it again tomorrow. Yeah. It's routine. <laughs> yeah, right. But what is life yeah. if you're not enjoying it? And I think that's a great message that you exactly. have constructed. And your life journey is a beautiful journey, man. And I am here for it. I'm a big fan. And I really hope yeah. that I get yeah. to have another serious talk with you someday in the future. And you tell me, I'm here. I'm in my place and I'm, I'm still not 100% okay, but I am very much okay with not being 100% okay. Yeah. Here's why. And I yeah. can't wait for that. I can't wait for that talk. Cord, you've been an absolute pleasure, my friend. You, you so have, wonderful. I Thank enjoyed you. the talk so very much. I was, I, 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 Me too. I enjoyed it so much. I did not pour another drink, which is, says right. a lot. Um, I'm not an alcoholic. Take that, everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made drink, not drink, another drink. I typically <laughs> have at least two glasses. Especially when I'm in, in but I was so deep into, into concentration. Right. Now, before we go, let everyone know, please, where they can find you. What you have? I mean, you kind of talked about what you got upcoming, but um, sure. yeah. 
Give us the deets. It's hard to tell people where uh, where to find me because, like I, I said, know I'm this, I'm I know this is hard for you. I know. Um, uh, which I probably mm. will. I mean, Mythmatic is a cool name, and it makes me mm. go, yeah, that's mm. cool. Um, and also, all of my branding on all of my video games handle is Mythmatic, so why okay. not do it? Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, you can find me currently twitch.tv slash cord, and if you can't, mm. uh, you can find me twitch.tv slash Mythmatic, M-Y-T-H-E-M-A-T-I-C. Um, I stream uh, games usually where you don't see role players. I usually role play at people until they role play back. Uh, <laughs> that's usually what I do. Um, I also have been known to be the Hudless Horseman, so I will, uh, if the game you can turn the HUD off, I probably will be playing it with the HUD off. Uh, I like cinematics, I like being immersed, uh, and those are, uh, those are usually the best way to do it. Turn the HUD off, turn the, and, and get cinematic with it. Um, get cinematic, get mythematic. Uh, but <laughs> that is, uh, where you could find me just on my channel, and on Fridays, uh, currently, I'm doing a traveler campaign, and that's like uh, 1970s, uh, 1970s, 19, early 1980s uh, RPG. Uh, no, it's traveler. It's a space opera, uh, and imagine just like uh, imagine Firefly, right? If you're in that you're in that ship, you have to make sure the ship stays afloat, uh, and you have to make sure that ship goes from one jump to the other. It's that, oh. um, but it is so it's like that space opera of going from one system to another. My character I play in that is a uh, a renegade rogue, he, or I'm sorry, renegade rogue. He's a, a clone that has gone rogue. Um, so uh, his prime is uh, a diplomat of the empire. He is not a part of that empire. He is in fact a fake it till you make it, uh, once drug addict, or no, once drug addict, then drug dealer. Uh, huh. Because in, in Traveler, you don't make your character the way you want to. You mm. start off with an idea and then you let's say every level you would roll in this game it's called terms uh you would roll every four years of your character's life to see where they end up okay. and uh, my character failed out of everything i wanted him to be so uh which is really cool because he's a fake it till you make it type character mm. he is a diplomat uh he's really cool he's a piece of shit um but he's a self-proclaimed uh, admiral uh a part of the crew and uh, everyone's starting to tolerate him and he's starting to have a heart He's sort of the Grinch of the crew. Anyway, check it out. It's on Trooper SJP's channel on Fridays. We're six seasons in, um, oh. but all of it is on uh, YouTube. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been fun. They're great. And um, and then we'll, you'll see me here on Table Story uh, when you see me here on Table Story in these shows or uh, Spellwind Season 2, whenever that is, or these other redacted shows I want to do. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you so very much again. And thank you, Storians, for allowing us to be able to bring you season two of Under the Table. And that is a wrap, everybody. We have wrapped up season two. Thank oh. you so very much for funding it. And hopefully we can get just as much support for season three um, and even more support. Keep in mind that any extra support that we get, we are being able to probably even help out the guests a little bit. You know what I'm so we also try to keep the lights on here at Table Story. So please keep in mind. Also, this Friday, guys, Friday, 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 which is tomorrow, yeah. um, there is a shill show. And I'm going to tell you, you do not want to miss this shill show. You don't want to miss it. Mm -hmm. I have seen some background things, mm -hmm. and I have laughed. Me so too. I have laughed wanna... my ass off. Also, I questioned my friends. Um, but yeah. at the end of the day, not nah, in a good way. Um, definitely go check that out. It's on a Twitter because we don't call it the other thing. Um, there is a announcement there in, in, in the video there. Also, you can catch it before the shows, but Friday, tomorrow is going to be really awesome. So make sure you're here for that. If you have any questions, make sure you refer to our Discord. And un unlike anything else, there's nothing like under the table here because we have great artists, great actors, great directors and producers that you get to learn more. That's just not surface level. And if you want more, make sure you tell us how you feel about the seasons and if you want more. As a reminder, we will be wrapping these seasons up and, and have a like a little break, a little in between the point five, um, where it'll be a actor round table for both season one and season two. So combine with that. Stick around, don't go anywhere. We have an announcement to make right after this. And if you've been here for the other shows, you know what that announcement is. But until next time, everyone, have an amazing day. And as Cord says, hey man, feast off of creativity in life. And your food might just taste better. At the end of the day. We'll see you around.
Hello there, welcome to Table Story. I wanted to take a moment to let you know some other ways that you can support the channel, see some extra merchandise, and find some additional content that you might not be aware of. Merch.tablestory.tv is our official merchandise store and membership feed. Here you can see some of the merchandise for the channel and shows like these hoodies, these hats, this very elegant pillow and more. There's also some additional content available, things like session zeros and pre-show ready workshop episodes of our shows. We also have a series we call The Green Room, which are short post-show chats with the casts of our shows recorded immediately after the episode airs live on Twitch. The Green Room content is available retroactively for any members at any level. However, there are additional elements and discounts for storians that support at higher levels. You can also listen to all of your favorite Table Story shows in audio podcast format on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. Please make sure to rate and subscribe to those too. It's incredibly helpful. Thank you. Lastly, if you miss any of the episodes live or you want to go back and watch previous series, all of our shows are available in playlists on YouTube and every episode airs at noon Eastern the day after it airs live on Twitch. And thank you so much for watching and supporting Table Story. We hope you enjoy the merch and the content as much as we enjoy making it.